Good afternoon. This is Doc Allen coming to you live from beautiful Ken Dugan Field at Stephen Lee Marsh Stadium on the campus of Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee, as we get set to bring you college baseball action between Appalachian State University and the homestanding Lipscomb Bisons. Game two of a three-game series between these two teams who played an 11-inning thriller last night. That was ultimately won by Appalachian State, who came away with a 9-5 to victory over Lipscomb, again, in a game that played out over 11 innings last night. The visiting Mountaineers from Appalachian State are part of the Sun Belt Conference. They come into today's contest with a record of 13 wins and 15 losses on the season, 6-3 and three in Sun Belt Conference play. The Bisons from the Atlantic Sun Conference have a season record of 11 wins and 17 losses, 4 and 8 in Atlantic Sun Conference play. And as mentioned, last time out, the Bisons defeated by the Mountaineers 9 to 5 in 11 innings. Let's take a look at today's starting lineups. First, for the visiting Mountaineers from Appalachian State. Leading off, third baseman, number 7, Peyton Idle. Batting second, designated hitter, number 32, Andrew Turrell. Batting third, Second baseman, number four, Luke Drumheller. Batting fourth, left fielder, number five, Kendall McGowan. Batting fifth, first baseman, number 28, Robbie Young. Batting sixth, right fielder, number 34, Philip Cole. Batting seventh, catcher, number six, Carson Arnold. Batting eighth, center fielder, number 22, Alex Leshock. And batting ninth, playing shortstop, number three, Bailey Welch. The starting pitcher for the Mountaineers is senior left-hander Quentin Martinez. He's number 18. This will be his ninth start on the season. He's appeared in eight games, started all eight, has a season record of three wins and four losses, an ERA of 4.50. He's worked 42 innings, given up 42 hits, 24 runs, 21 earned, 12 walks, 31 strikeouts, and opponents are batting 262 against Martinez. The Mountaineers are coached by... Kermit Smith, Coach Smith in his fifth season. He's assisted by Justin Aspergen, Britt Johnson, and Ryan Smoot. And now let's take a look at the starting lineup for the homestanding Lipscomb Bisons. Leading off in left field will be number 55, Tiger Borum. Batting second, shortstop, number six, Robbie Merced. Batting third, designated hitter, number 30, Chris Bachelor. Batting fourth, first baseman, number 44, Malik Williams. Batting fifth, the catcher, number one, Chaz Bertolani. Batting sixth, third baseman, number five, Carter Smith. Batting seventh, right fielder, number four, Ty Jones. Batting eighth, center fielder, number 19, Maddox Houghton. And batting ninth, second baseman, number two, Brian Moore. Getting the start on the mound today for the Bisons, the junior right-hander Dylan Bierman, number 28, this will be Bierman's fourth start on the season. He's appeared in nine games, started three of them, has a one-win, three-loss record with a 7.40 ERA. He's worked 20 and two-thirds innings, giving up 23 hits, 26 runs, 17 of them earned, 10 walks, 17 strikeouts, and opponents batting 271 against him. The head coach for the Bisons is Jeff Forehand. He's in his 15th season as head coach. He's assisted by pitching coach Grayson Crawford, hitting coach Ryan Price, Director of Baseball Operations Brian Ryman, and volunteer assistant Will Hawks. The Bisons team manager is Kyle Kalsman. The head groundskeeper is Colby Rawls. And the head baseball athletic trainer is Clint Woods. Umpires for today's game behind the plate will be Matthew Barrett. At first base, Todd Henderson. And at third base, Chris Dykeman. Uh, weather right now at Ken Dugan Field, it's mostly cloudy. The lights are on. We have a temperature of 63 degrees. The wind is blowing from the west-northwest at about 9 miles per hour, so it's blowing straight out towards left center field at the present time for us as we get set for baseball action between Lipscomb and Appalachian State. We appreciate you joining us on YouTube Live. Again, this is Doc Allen coming to you today. Game two of this three-game series after the four-hour-plus game played last night between these two teams. And as we mentioned, extra inning affair won by the Mountaineers 9-5. to five. We're going to step aside for a moment as our national anthem is played here at Dugan Field.
Our national anthem is in the books, and we get set for baseball action between Lipscomb and Appalachian State. Again, game two in this three-game series. Last night's affair was a tight affair that went back and forth. The teams combined for 20 hits, 14 by Appalachian State, 6 by the Bisons. And again, the Bisons got out to a 5 to nothing lead in the third inning, but Appalachian State kept chipping back, scoring 1 in the 4th, 3 in the 6th, 1 in the 7th. And then neither team could score any runs in the 8th, ninth, or 10th. Appalachian State broke through and scored four runs in the top of the 11th, and the Bisons could not answer, and that gave the Appalachian State Mountaineers the 9-5 to victory. As Appalachian State totaled nine runs on 14 hits and one error, the Bisons had five runs, six hits, and two errors. The Mountaineers come into the game on the season batting 248 as a team. They've got a total of 17 home runs in the course of the season, and they've stolen 31 out of 36 bases, so a team that likes to run for Coach Kermit Smith. On the mound, the team ERA is 6.67, and opponents batting 269 against the Mountaineers. The Bisons come in with a team batting average of 249 on the season. They've got 22 home runs on the season. And the Bisons, again, also active on the base pass. They've stolen 43 bags in their 29 games. They're 43 of 55 on stolen bases for the season. The Bison's team pitching staff ERA 6.25, and opponents are batting 283 against Lipscomb on the season. So again, getting the start today will be the junior right-hander Dylan Bierman. He's 6'1", 205 pounds out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, previously pitched at Johnson County Community College. And he'll face the top of the Bison's order, or correction, the top of the Mountaineers order, Idle, Terrell, and Drummeller to get this one started today. We'll set the defensive alignment for you here in just a moment. You might notice if you're tuning in, Bison's in an unusual uh, look today. They're in teal-colored jerseys. Those teal jerseys are being worn as a fundraiser for uh, funds to be raised against sexual assault, sexual assault awareness. So if you'd like to purchase one of the jerseys being worn by one of the players today, you can go online, LipscombSports.com. We'll have information about that. There's an online auction, and you can own one of these game-worn jerseys today that the Bison's are in. So the Bison's are... In their black caps with the white L on them, the teal jerseys, uh, white pants for the afternoon with the black trim on the side. And the Mountaineers are in a dark gray uh, uniform with gold numerals and black numbers outlined in gold. So we get set to start. Peyton Idle will stand in and get things started for the Mountaineers against Dylan Bierman. And the first pitch is swung on and hit in the air towards center field. Houghton's coming on, still coming on, and it's going to drop in for a base hit. So a swinging base hit for Peyton Idle on the first pitch of the game, hit that one kind of off the end of the bat and it dropped into center field. Idle had two, six, two hits and six trips last night, so he was on base a couple of times. And that'll bring up the designated hitter, Andrew Terrell. Terrell comes in batting 235 on the year, no homers and nine RBIs. He played in last night's game and had two hits in five trips to the plate for the Mountaineers. So we'll see how they elect to play it here after getting their leadoff runner on base. Beerman throws a slider over the outside corner, and it's a strike. Nothing in one. Defensively for the Bisons, Borum is in left field, Houghton in center, Jones in right, Smith at third, Merced at short, Moore at second, Williams at first, Bertolani doing the catching, and junior right-hander Dylan Beerman on the mound. He gets set to bring an 0-1 pitch to Terrell. Fastball hit foul down the third baseline, and quickly he's ahead of Terrell 0-2. Bison's with a little bit of a shuffled lineup. Their fine senior second baseman and Atlantic Sun Conference Player of the Year, Haddon Adams, was injured in the Tuesday game at Pittsburgh and so was not in the lineup last night and is not in the lineup again today. Brian Moore shifts over from his usual place at third base to play second. Carter Smith is playing at third today. Here comes the 0-2 from Bierman to Terrell. And he gets him. Ball strike three. Like a changeup that he pulled the string on and Terrell watched it for strike three. So a first out of the inning, and that'll bring up Luke Drummeller, the second baseman. Drummeller played last night and was 0 for 6 with two strikeouts in the game. He comes in on the season batting 289. He has three homers and 24 RBIs, which actually leads the Mountaineers. So he's been very productive out of that three hole. He's a junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And he'll bat now with one out and a runner at first base. Idle on the season only has one stolen base. He's one for one on st steals. A bit unusual for the leadoff hitter. And Beerman's going to chase him back. And he's back in sliding. Defensive alignment, the shortstop Merced has swung a little bit up the middle towards second base. He's a couple of steps to the left of second. Everyone else in a fairly standard position here. 
And here comes the first pitch from Bierman to Drummiller. It will be made instead. He picks him off of first. So a nice move from Bierman there, and he's going to get Idle picked off of first base. Looks like he had him leaning in a quick move with good feet by Bierman, and so that makes the second out of the inning, and that'll allow Drumheller to bat now with the bases empty. Excellent move there by Bierman to pick that runner off of first, and he swings and hits it all in the air to center field. Houghton going back, still going back, still going back, looks up and gone, home run. So Drumheller hits that out to the deepest part of the ballpark over the 400-foot sign in center field, and that's going to be his fourth home run on the season and his 25th RBI, and Appalachian State has taken a one nothing lead. So that really makes that pickoff move even bigger now because that would have been a two-run home run had Bierman not picked off the runner idle at first base. But Drum Drumheller hits a solo home run, and that'll bring up the designated hinder hitter, Kendall McGowan. McGowan comes in batting 279 on the season, four home runs, 16 RBIs. He actually leads the club with those four home runs. And he swings and hits this in the air towards center field. Shallow, Houghton coming on, still coming on. Diving grab, and he makes it to play there. Another fine catch from Maddox Houghton for the third out in the inning. But the Mountaineers do put a run on the board, courtesy of two hits. There's no one left on base, and we go to the bottom half of the first inning. Your score, Appalachian State 1, and Lipscomb coming to bat. You're watching Lipscomb Bison's Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the bottom half of the first inning. Appalachian State puts her on on the board in the top of the first, and the Bisons will come to bat, sending their one, two, and three hitters, Borum, Merced, and Bachelor, to face the left-hander, Quentin Martinez, again, a senior. Martinez is a six foot four, 185 185-pounder out of Orlando, Florida, prepped at Bishop Moore High School, and then played at St. Petersburg College. Again, he's three and four on the season with a 4.50 ERA. He's been the usual game two starter for the Mountaineers, and again, his ninth start on the season. And Tiger Borum will start things off for the Bisons. Borum playing in left field today, batting 267, one home run and 15 RBIs. Borum had one hit and two trips last night, also had three walks, so he was on base four times in the game for the Bisons last night. And he gets set to face Martinez, who will throw a fastball that misses high for ball one. Defensively for the Mountaineers, McGowan's in left, Leshock is in center, Cole in right. Idle at third, Welch at short, Drumheller at second, Young at first, and Arnold doing the catching. Martinez on the mound. Here comes the 1-0. That's going to miss outside, and it's going to be two balls and no strikes on Tiger Borum. Martinez was the Sun Belt Conference Pitcher of the Week after the opening weekend this year. He threw seven innings and shut out Winthrop 4-0. Didn't allow a run and facing 22 batters, just one over the minimum. Here comes the 2-0. That's going to miss outside, and quickly he's behind Borum 3-0. 
Martinez also started all four of his 2020 appearances. He started as the Game 3 weekend starter and then moved up to Game 2, and he went at least five innings in each of those starts last year, posting a 3.68 ERA. That's right through there for strike one, so three balls and one strike to Tiger Bora. Again, we mentioned he's got 31 strikeouts on the season against 12 walks, so guys are typically around the strike zone and has pitched a lot for the last two seasons. That's fouled out of play to the right side, and the count will now run full after starting 3-0. and It's now 3-2 and on Borum. Martinez has a long start this season of eight innings, and he went against Arkansas State. He allowed three runs on seven hits and had five punch-outs in that game. Here comes the payoff to Borum. Fastball misses low, and Borum is going to be on board with a walk. So that'll bring up the Bison shortstop, Robbie Merced. Merced comes in batting 250 on the season, two home runs and six RBIs. Yesterday's action, Robbie was 0 for 3, did have a couple walks that got him on base. And Borum actually stole a base in the game last night. So for the season, Borum is now 7 out of 11 on steals. And we'll see how the Bisons elect to play it here in the bottom half of the first inning. Bisons with some chances in last night's game. Had the bases loaded in the 10th inning and didn't score. Had the winning run on base in the 9th and didn't score. He tries to bunt and pops it into the Mountaineers' dugout. Nothing in one. The Bisons left seven runners on base last night, but the Mountaineers left 13 runners on base. So both clubs had a lot of opportunities through those latter innings and couldn't get, it, couldn't get anything across, leading to that extra inning game that was won by App State. Here comes the 0-1 pitch to Merced. This is with a fastball high, and it'll be a ball and a strike. Outstanding pitching really on both sides last night. The Mountaineers starter Tyler Tuttle went six innings at seven strikeouts, did give up five runs, but only five hits, and was very, very effective. And then outstanding job by Noah Hall closing for App State. We'll tell you about that in a moment. First, the 1-1 pitch instead will go to first. Hall has been the Game 3 starter in a lot of the games this season for App State. He came on and pitched two and two-thirds outstanding innings last night. Walked three, but didn't allow a hit. Struck out three, and he was the winning pitcher, taking his record to 5-0 and on the season. So an impressive outing for Hall, who got the win last night for the Mountaineers. Here comes the 1-1 to Merced. Looks like a breaking ball, and it's going to miss low, and it's 2-1. and one. On the Bison side last night, fantastic work in relief by Tyler Guilfoyle. It was an excellent start from Max Habiger. He went five and two-thirds innings, gave up four runs that were all earned, walked only one and struck out four. And then Tyler Guilfoyle wound up pitching four innings, giving up only one hit, no runs, and striking out seven. Here comes the 2-1 pitch, swung on, hit in the air towards right center field. Center fielder Lay Sharks going back, still going back, going up to the wall, and off the wall. Borum is going to round second and head towards third. He's going to get in there standing, and Merced is going to be on second with a double. So that ball was really well hit. It, it first off the bat looked like it might hang up to be caught, but it kept going, kept going, kept going. Winds blowing out toward that way, and it went off the wall. Lay Shock had no play on it. Borum had to hold up to see if it would be caught, so he's at third now, and Merced is at second, and that'll bring up the designated hitter Chris Bashler, batting with two on and nobody out in the bottom half of the first inning. Bachelor comes in batting 280, leads the Bisons with five home runs and also 24 RBIs on the season. That's second on the team. Chris has been swinging a very hot bat lately. Last night he was one for four with a couple of RBIs and also had a walk. Did have a double in last night's game. He awaits Martinez, his first offering. Fastball that's going to stay high for ball one. And fills back a double play depth up the middle. They're a step or two behind the bag on the corners with Idle at third and Young at first. First baseman Young has swung off the line a pretty good distance here. And they're expecting Bachelor to pull the ball here. Outfield straight away and fairly deep. Here comes the 1-0. Off-speed pitch, and that's going to get in there for a called strike, like the curveball. That'll take the count to 1-1 one one on Bachelor. Again, Borum, your runner at third, Merced at second. Good speed on both bases for the Bisons. Here comes the 1-1 offering to Bachelor. Another curve, and that's going to stay outside, and that's going to make the count two balls and one strike. So Martinez has not been on the zone quite as heavily yet as you would expect. 
You did mention he's 31 strikeouts and 12 walks on the season. Those 12 walks coming in 42 innings. So he's a guy who does not usually struggle with command. But he's fallen behind a couple of the Bison's hitters here in this inning. And we await the 2-1 pitch to Bachelor. He takes a long look in at the signs. Now he's going to come set. That's going to be a fastball that misses outside. So Bachelor's now ahead in the count. Three balls and one strike. First baseman Malik Williams awaits on deck. Bison's in business here in the first inning. After App State put up a run in the top of the first, they lead one to nothing over Lipscomb here in the bottom of the first. But the Bison's runner second, third, nobody out. Here comes a 3-1 pitch to Chris Bachelor. Swings and fouls it out of play, and that'll run the count full three and two. So three balls, two strikes, nobody out, runner second and third, and Bachelor will await the offering from senior left-hander Quentin Martinez. It's a fastball and call strike three, low and inside, good location on that pitch. So Bachelor will be retired for the first out of the inning, and that'll bring up first baseman Malik Williams. Malik comes in batting 257 on the year, one home run and six RBIs. Malik was two for five last night, scored a run and had a couple of RBIs. One of those hits was a double. And one of his other base hits he hit through the gap between first and second base to right field. So it's nice to see Malik using that off field. You know when he's using all fields that he becomes a very dangerous hitter. So he'll bat now with one out, runner second and third. Hit on the ground towards second. Drumheller's going to field it, throw to first, but Borum's going to come in and we've got a tie ball game. So Williams with the RBI ground out. And the Bisons tie it up as Borum crosses the plate. Merced will move over to third now with two outs. And that'll bring up catcher Chaz Bertolani. Bertolani, the Bisons' leading hitter. He's batting 302 on the season. He's got one home run and 25 RBIs. The 25 RBIs also leads the club. So Chaz is having an excellent offensive season. Been catching almost every game. He caught last night and catching again today. So despite that heavy workload, Bertolani still swinging a good Good bat. He bats now with two outs and a runner at third. And that's Robbie, Bo um, Robbie Merced, correction. And there's a curveball that's going to be in there for a strike. Nothing in one to Chaz Bertolani. Bertolani last night was 0 for 3. Did get on base a couple of times via the walk. Here comes the 0-1. Fastball misses outside, and it evens the count at a ball and a strike. And They've got a delayed steal on, and they're going to get him at home. So a delayed steal attempt there from Merced. But App State quickly gets the ball back, and so Merced will be caught stealing as the third out of the inning. So the Bisons do manage to pick up one run on one hit. They have no one left on base, and we've played one full inning, and your score, Lipscomb 1, Appalachian State 1. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to inning number two. Lipscomb and Appalachian State tied at one. And back on the mound, Dylan Bierman. He'll be facing five, six, and seven for the Mountaineers. 
Young, Cole, and Arnold to start off the second inning here. Again, both teams putting up a run. Mountaineers had two base hits in the first inning, and the Bisons had one base hit. And so Beerman set to go to work here in the top half of the second inning. like a slider that's going to miss inside for a ball. Young comes in as the leading hitter by average on the team for the Mountaineers. He's batting 314, three home runs and 17 RBIs on the season. That's good enough for third on the team in terms of the RBI production and second on the team in home runs. So he's had a fine senior season as Robbie Young. And looks like we're having a meeting of the umpires here. I'm not quite sure what that's about, whether that might have to do with whether he was hit by the pitch. That's the only thing I can figure. I didn't see anything that Suggested that Young thought he was hit, but uh, we're having a conference among home plate umpire Matthew Barrett, first base umpire Todd Hitterson, and third base umpire Chris Dykeman. And it looks like they're going to say, nope, we're going to stay in the box, and it's going to be a one ball, no strike count. So, again, we don't have a field mic, so I can't hear what's going on down there, but that would be my supposition that they were conferencing about whether he appeared to be hit by that pitch. Regardless, here comes the 1-0 from Bierman. That's going to be on the outside corner, and that's going to even the count at one ball and one strike. So three-game series between these two teams this weekend, out-of-conference series for both of them, again, with the Bisons part of the Atlantic Sun Conference and App State part of the Sun Belt. The 1-1 one is going to bounce up there, and that's going to be 2-1 and one on Young. Bisons coming off an extended road trip. Last Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, they were at Liberty with three games and then had a game midweek game at Pittsburgh. On Tuesday, they're supposed to play a second game on Wednesday. That one was canceled due to scheduling. Ground ball hit towards Moore. He bobbles it off the glove, picks it up, throws to first, and going to get him in time. So that's going to retire Young on the ground out to second baseman Brian Moore. Ball was not hit very hard, but it's hit to the right. Moore went over and backhanded it, popped out of his glove, but he picked it up and got him at first. So that will bring up right fielder Philip Cole. Cole's a junior. He's batting 206, two home runs and 19 RBIs on the year. He was the designated hitter last night, and he had a big night. He was three for six with three RBIs, scored two runs, had a double in that game. And he looks at a strike, nothing in one. Swung on, hits the breaking ball towards third. Smith gloves it. It's going to throw on to first. And quickly, there are two outs in the top half of the second inning. Looks like a breaking ball that he got in front of and tapped down to the third baseman. And so that'll bring up catcher Carson Arnold. Arnold's only had 15 at-bats on the season. He's got one hit in those 15 trips, so 067 on the season. No home runs and one RBI. He was not in the lineup last night, so he's doing the catching today after Hayden Cross caught last night's game. And Beerman starts him off with, looks like a curveball that stays high, one ball and no strikes. Here comes the 1-0 from Beerman. That's going to stay high with the fastball as well, two balls and no strikes. So the Bison's glad to be back home after that road trip that we mentioned. The Bison have been playing good ball at home. They're 8-4 and four on the season here at Ken Dugan Field. Here comes the 2-0 swung and tapped foul. It's two balls and one strike. Had three tough games against Liberty. He played a really tight game on Friday night and another one-run game on Sunday. Saturday's game became a bit of a one-sided affair. And then on Tuesday, the Bisons went on the road to top 25 club Pittsburgh and, and played a good ball game. And Pittsburgh won 9-6. That's hitting the air towards center field. Houghton's going to drift a few steps to the left. And he's going to record it for the third out in the inning. So nothing doing for the Mountaineers in the top of the second. We head to the bottom half of the second inning. Your score, Lipscomb 1, Appalachian State 1. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live.
We head to the bottom half of the second inning. Lipscomb will send up 5, 6, and 7. Bertolani, Smith, and Jones to face Quentin Martinez. Bertolani was at bat in the bottom of the first when the Bisons tried that delayed steal with Robbie Merced from third, and he was thrown out at the plate. So Bertolani gets to stand back in there for his first at bat of the day. We mentioned he's the leading hitter for the Bisons, hitting at a 302 clip coming in thus far on the season. He's slugging 395. He's had, as we mentioned, a team high 25 RBIs and a 761 OPS. Prior to last weekend, he had an eight game hit streak, 14 games where he'd reach base, and he's had seven multi RBI, multi hit games. He watches that one go inside and low for ball one. So Bertolani, one of the four Bison selected to the Atlantic Sun Conference preseason all conference team. And he's followed up last year's campaign with an excellent campaign, both behind the plate and at the bat. Here comes the 1 0 from Martinez. That's a off-speed pitch that must have missed low. It's going to be two balls and no strikes on Chaz Bertolani. We'll pass along hello wishes to his parents, Mike and Jill, who I'm sure are watching over in Georgia today and cheering on Chaz here. He waits for a 2-0. That's a fastball missing high, and it's three balls and no strikes now on Bertolani. So again, Martinez struggling to command the zone here early on. He's going to Three ball counts on three of the first five hitters he's faced. Here comes the 3-0. And that's going to miss outside for ball four. So Bertolani's aboard with a leadoff walk, bringing up third baseman Carter Smith. Smith comes in batting 233 on the season, two home runs and 11 RBIs. Had one hit and five trips with an RBI last night. And he'll bat now with Chas Bertolani running at first. Bertolani one for one in stolen bases on the season, so he is a threat to move. And we'll see if the Bisons elect to use the small ball game here. He's not bunting, and he takes a fastball through there for strike one. So a shift is on for the Mountaineers. Shortstop Welch is all the way on the first base side of second base. Second baseman Drumheller shifted way over into the hole between first and second. And, of course, Young holding the runner on at first. So the only fielder on the left, left side of second base is the third baseman, Idle. Here comes the 0-1 pitch to Smith. Again, he's not bunting, and he takes another strike across the outside point, the corner. So really good location there from Martinez, and he's quickly got Smith in a no-ball two-strike hole. Outfield is fairly straight away, but the infield really shifted for that pull side for Carter Smith. comes the 0-2 from Martinez. Swung on and hit to the second baseman. Drumheller's up with it. Flips to second for one. Throw to first and double play. So the shift works as Carter Smith hits it on the ground right to Drumheller. He flipped it to Welch who turned it around quickly to Young. And that'll go down as a 4-6-3 double play and it'll race the Bison's leadoff base runner. And it'll bring up Ty Jones. He'll bat with two outs and the bases empty. Jones comes in batting 300 on the season. Two home runs and 10 RBIs. One of those home runs was in that Tuesday game at Pittsburgh where he came on as a pinch hitter and hit a home run out of the park. Looks at a breaking ball that's in there for strike one. Ty played last night, got the start, was 0 for 4 on the night. Did draw a base on balls. So he bats now with two outs, bases empty. Bottom of the second inning. Lipscomb and App State tied 1-1. One to one. Swung on and hit towards third. Idle's going to come up and field it. And flip on to first. And the Bisons are quickly retired here in the bottom half of the second inning. So nothing doing for Lipscomb. We've played two full innings in your score. Lipscomb won. Appalachian State won. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live.
top of the third inning awaits us here. It'll be 8-9-1 and one for the Mountaineers. Lay Shock, Welch, and back to the top of the order, Idle, to face right-hander Dylan Bierman. Bierman has worked two innings, surrendered two hits, one run, one earned. He has no walks and one strikeout. And Lay Shock will get it started for the Mountaineers. He's the center fielder today. Comes in batting 286 on the season with one home run and 14 RBIs. He was one for four in last night's affair, did score a run and had an RBI. Beerman starts it off with what looks like a slider, and they'll get in there for strike one. So the 0 1 from Beerman. Off speed pitch hit in the air to right field. John's coming on, still coming on. He's going to get under it, and he's going to glove it for out number one. So that'll retire Lay Shock and bring up the shortstop Bailey Welch. Welch hitting 276 on the season, one home run and 14 RBIs. Last night's action, he was 0 for 5 with a couple of strikeouts. So he's still looking for his first hit on the weekend. And he'll stand in against right hander Dylan Bierman. It's a veteran ball club for App State. They returned all but one of their position starters from last season. Up, oh, lays down a bunt. It's going to go foul. That's going to be strike one. So shortstop Luke Allison, the only player that didn't come back. They also returned all but one of their primary pitchers. The only pitcher that didn't come back was their closer, Jack Hartman, who was a fourth-round pick in the draft by the Pittsburgh Pirates. So very few losses for Coach Smith and his Mountaineers team. They did have two 2020 seniors come back for additional season, the first baseman Young and pitcher Andrew Papp. Here comes the 0-1 from Bierman, not bunting, swings and hits it in the air towards center field. Houghton coming on, coming on. Camps under it, and he's going to glove it for the second out of the inning. So that takes us back to the top of the order, and third baseman Billy Idle, or Peyton Idle, <laughs> slip of the tongue there. Uh, Peyton Idle is not Billy Idle. Don't know if there's any relationship there or not, but he started the game off with a sw swinging single back in the first inning, and then he was picked off of first base by right-hander Dylan Beerman. So he'll bat now with two outs, and the base is empty in the top of the third inning. Lips coming Appalachian State tied at one. That's a fastball off the outside corner of the plate for ball one. Again, Idle coming in batting 214 on the season, one home run and 11 RBIs. Off speed pitch misses high, 2 0. Oh. I'm dating myself there with a Billy Idle reference. Uh, there's only a certain generation of our fans that would know who that gentleman is, but uh, if you're of a certain age, you'll remember him as an artist. Two balls and no strikes. That one's going to catch the outside corner, like another off-speed pitch, maybe a slider, and it's 2-1 and one now on Idle. Andrew Terrell waits on deck if Idle is able to extend the inning here. Two one from Bierman, just missed low. Good location with that fastball, but it's going to be low. According to home plate umpire Matthew Barrett, so it's 3-1 and one now for Idle. Bierman working quickly here, and that one's going to miss outside for ball four. So Idle, get a, Idle will uh, go to jog down to first base with a two-out walk, and that will bring up Andrew Terrell, who was a strikeout victim his first time up today. He's the designated hitter today, and Bierman caught him looking back in the first inning. So he'll bat with two outs and a runner on first. Again, Idle only with one stolen base on the season. He's one for one. Carroll is a 5'11", 165-pound junior out of Franklin, North Carolina. Went to Franklin High School. Starts him off with a slider that catches the inside corner. It'll be no balls and one strike. So Bierman will throw a four-seam and a two-seam fastball. He'll throw a slider and a changeup. Guy likes to move the ball around and use both sides of the plate. And very effective with those off-speed pitches. Here comes the 0-1. Instead, he's going to go to first. And Idle certainly has a memory of... Beerman's move. He picked him off back in the first inning, so there's no doubt that he'll cut that lead down a little bit this time around. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. Slider's going to miss low, and it's going to even the count at one ball and one strike. So we mentioned that extended road trip for the Bisons last weekend. They're going to be closer to home. They play Belmont in a single midweek game this Wednesday. That's a 1 p.m. start currently on the schedule here at Dugan Field. And then the Bison's on the road for three at Kennesaw State next weekend. Throw to first again, and he's back. The Bisons will follow that up with a single game away at top five ranked Tennessee. That's Tuesday the 27th. So 
home against Belmont on Wednesday and then four games on the road, three conference games at Kennesaw State and one at Tennessee before returning home again. Here comes the 1-1. Swung on and hit right to the third baseman. It's going to be off the glove of Smith. It's going to drift into foul, foul territory. But Idle's going to hold up at second base. Let's see how they score that. That ball was hit pretty hard. Just flashed off the glove of Smith. And that'll put two men on with two outs. Still waiting on an official scoring ruling. But nonetheless, Idle will get down to first, and Terrell is aboard, or correction, Idle will go to second. Terrell's aboard at first, and that brings up Luke Drumheller. And Drumheller homered back in the first inning to give the Mountaineers their only run of the day. They have scored that as an error. So the first Bison's error on the day, and that's going to be a slider that misses inside ball one. So score that as an error on the third baseman, Carter Smith. That moves Idle to second, Terrell down to first. And there's two on and two out for Drumheller, who again came in batting 289. He's now got four homers and 25 RBIs on the season. So dangerous bat in the lineup here for Coach Smith and the Mountaineers. And we mentioned he was 0 for 6 last night, but he took care of that quickly in his first at-bat. That one just missed inside. Again, looks like an off-speed pitch. And it's 2-0. and Wind has sort of shifted around now. It was blowing sort of straight out towards center field. Now it's blowing more toward the left field line. We mentioned it's in the range of 9 to 10 miles an hour. And we expect a pretty steady breeze all afternoon here. Overcast skies and 63, deg 63 degrees at Ken Dugan Field for game two of this three-game series. We mentioned the veteran starters coming back for App State. They actually brought back 29 players from their 2020 team and then had 10 newcomers, four of whom were pitchers this year. Comes the 2-0, swung on and hit in the air towards shallow left field. Borum's coming in. He's coming in, and he's going to glove it there for the third out. So a big out there as Bierman retires Drumheller via the pop fly, and that'll strand two runners, the first two that they've stranded on the day. So the Mountaineers do not score, and we've played two and a half innings in your score. Lipscomb won, Appalachian State won. You're watching Lipscomb Bison's Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the bottom of the third inning. It'll be 8-9-1 and one, due up for the Lipscomb Bisons. Maddox Houghton, Brian Moore, and then the top of the order, Tiger Borum, to face left-hander Quentin Martinez. Martinez, through two innings, has given up one hit, one run, one earned, walked two, and struck out one. And Houghton will get things started for the Bisons. Maddox with a tough night last night, went 0-4, for 4, so he's looking for his first base hit on the weekend. And we'll see if he can get things started here for the Bisons against Quentin Martinez. Fastball swung on and hit foul. It'll be no balls and one strike. These teams are fairly evenly matched statistically. The Bisons came in hitting 252, App State 245. 22 homers for the Bisons, 17 for the Mountaineers, 145 RBIs for Lipscomb, 137 on the season for App State. The Bisons have struck out 241 times and App State 226 times on the season. So. That's fastball. It's going to catch the inside corner, and it's no balls and two strikes on Houghton. 
and the team ERAs. You mentioned Lipscomb 6.24 and App State 6.83. So a lot of statistical similarities between these teams coming into this weekend's action. Here's the 0-2 hit right back up the middle. Drumheller ranges to his left, scoops, throws, and got him. Nice play there by Drumheller. He had a really range to his right, backhand gloved it, threw on the run, and a nice scoop by Young, and that'll retire Maddox Houghton with the first out of the inning. So that'll bring up second baseman Brian Moore. Brian comes in hitting 247, one homer and nine RBIs. Brian had one hit and five trips last night and scored a run. He'll bat now with one out and the base is empty. Bottom of the third inning, Lipscomb and Appalachian State tied at one. We appreciate you joining us on YouTube Live. If you're in the area, please come on out. we still got space available, even with COVID protocols, plenty of space here. More with a great bunt to the right side. It's going to be picked up by Martinez, flipped to first, and not in time. So great placement on that bunt. That'll be a bunt single for Brian Moore. That'll be the Bison's second hit on the day. That'll put him aboard with one out and bring us back to the top of the order in Tiger Borum. Borum walked and eventually scored back in the first inning for the Bisons. Again, he comes in batting 267 on the season, one home run and 15 RBIs. Moore is a threat to run. He's actually 7 out of 8 on the season in stolen bases, so he and Borum are tied for the lead on the team with those seven steals. But Moore has swiped his in eight attempts. He's definitely a threat to run over at first, so... One out, one on, and Borum awaits the pitch from Martinez. Fastball in the outside corner. Good location there, nothing in one. Third baseman idled is playing even with the bags. Not expecting the bun in this situation here. Outfield straight away and normal depth. Throw's going to go to first, and Moore's going to get back easily. Each team with one run on two hits. The Bisons have committed an error. We're playing in the bottom of the third inning here, one-to-one -one between Lipscomb and Appalachian State. Here comes the 0-1 pitch to Borum. Fastball's through there, nothing in two. So Martinez seems to be settling in. He struggled a bit in the first inning, going to some three-ball counts, but since then he's been much more consistent in the zone, which is what we would have expected based on his season statistics. As we mentioned, he's only walked 12 batters in 42 innings, so... Typically around the zone for the senior left-hander, Quentin Martinez. And he's got Borum in an 0-2 hole. He's going to throw to first. Moore's going to get back. Again, not the normal catcher catching today for Appalachian State. Carson Arnold is catching today. So we'll see if the Bisons elect to test his arm. Here comes the 0-2. He's not going again. Throw back to first. We await the 0-2 to Borum. Instead, he's going to go to first again, keeping a close eye on him. No pickoffs on the season that I can find in the stat sheet for Martinez. Opposing runners have stolen three out of five bases on him on the season. The 0-2, he's not running. That's a fastball inside. And that'll make the count one ball and two strikes on Tyler Bo Tiger Borum. So three out of five on steals on the season against Martinez. And we'll await a one-two pitch here to Tiger Borum. Shortstop Robbie Merced waits on deck. And he's going to get him on strike three. That was a curveball. They caught the inside corner. Great location there. So that'll be the second out of the inning, and that'll bring up Robbie Merced. Merced doubled off the wall in right center field back in the first inning, so one for one on the day. Again, comes in batting at 250 on the season, two home runs and 16 RBI. So he'll be batting with two outs, and Brian Moore running at first. Moore reach via that bunt single that he put down toward that first baseline, an excellent bunt. See if he might elect to try to steal a bag here. He's not running. And it's a fastball off the outside part of the plate. 
Martinez definitely quick to the plate. He's using that slide step and that combined with coming from the left side. He is not giving the base runners much advantage over there. So you think if there were to be a steal, it'd have to be the so-called first move steal where the runner simply guessing that he's going to go home and he's going to try to take off on the first move that he sees. So one ball, no strikes. Swung on and tapped foul. Kind of a check swing there. And it's a ball and a strike. Looked like a fastball that he just tapped out of play to the right side. Again, if you're just tuning in, Lipscomb in a non-traditional teal jersey today. It's a fundraiser for sexual assault awareness, benefiting that effort here on campus. So if you're interested in bidding on one of those jerseys, please go to LipscombSports.com and submit a bid for one of the game-worn jerseys, and you could own one of these jerseys. So that's the reason the Bisons are in a non-traditional color today. Bisons typically in purple and gold, but today they're in the teal jerseys supporting this effort. And we've still got a one ball, one strike count to Robbie Merced. Moore's running, pitches downstairs for a strike, throws high, and he's going to be in there. So Moore steals his eighth base of the season. I believe we've got a two ball and a correction. Yes, one ball, two strike count. That was called a strike. So it's one balls and one ball and two strikes on Robbie Merced. That was like a fastball that was in the bottom of the zone. Merced did not offer at it. So Moore's now in scoring position with two outs at second base. But Merced down in the count, a ball and two strikes. Fastball outside. That'll leave in the count at two and two. So Moore had a really good jump there, but the throw from the catcher Arnold was high. I don't think they would have gotten him anyway. Moore had a really good jump, as we mentioned. He's fleet of foot. So he steals his eighth base in nine attempts on the season. And it's two and two with two outs to Robbie Merced. Designated hitter Chris Bachelor waits on deck if Merced is able to extend the inning here. Back in the first inning, Merced hit a fastball that went out to the right field fence for that double. Let's see what the 2-2 offering is breaking ball that stays low and that's going to be three and two on Merced. Merced a sophomore, 6'1", 177 pounds out of Springfield, Missouri. He played a year at Fort Scott Community College before coming to Nashville and joining the Bisons program this year. So he's a newcomer to this season. Outstanding defensive shortstop and really pick it over at short and has shown a pop at the plate here in the last two weeks. Here's the payoff. Takes ball four high. So good at bat from Merced there. And the Bisons will have two on with two outs for designated hitter Chris Bashler. Bashler was called out on strikes back in the first inning. So Bashler batting with two outs and two on. Bottom half of the third inning. Lipscomb won, Appalachian State won. Each team has put up a run in the first inning. Nobody scored in the second, and the Mountaineers were retired in the top of the third. So Lipscomb with two on, two out, and Bachelor standing in there. Again, Bachelor leads the team with five home runs. He's second on the team with 24 RBIs. Pickoff goes back to second, and Brian Moore is in there easily. So Moore on at second, and Merced on at first. Good speed on the bases for the Bisons. Third baseman idle is quite a distance off third. Something to keep an eye on. It wouldn't shock me to see Brian Moore maybe try to scoot over and get that bag at third as far as the third baseman is playing off. Bachelor swings through an off-speed pitch, and it's no balls and one strike. Got action next door at the Lipscomb softball diamond. Li Lipscomb is hosting Liberty in a conference game, and they're in the second inning of game two, and Liberty's leading Lipscomb two to nothing in this second game. That game's being televised on ESPN Plus. If you'd like to keep an eye on that one as you watch the Bisons here battle against the Mountaineers. Here comes the 0-1 pitch to Bashler. Swings and taps it towards third. Idle is up with it. He's going to throw to first, and that'll end the threat there. So the Bisons strand two runners and can't push anything across. We've played three full innings. Your score, Lipscomb 1, Appalachian State 1. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live.
We're headed to the top half of the fourth inning. Lipscomb and Appalachian State tied one to one. Game moving right along here. And due up for the Mountaineers will be four, five, and six. McGowan, Young, and Cole to face Dylan Bierman. Bierman has been very effective so far at the Bisons. He's given up two hits, one run, one earned, walked one, and struck out one. And he's thrown just 30 pitches through the first three innings. So he's been very efficient, which is a good thing for the Bisons. They used a total of six pitchers last night or down a couple of arms via injury. So great day to let the bullpen get a little bit of rest here. So Bierman facing off against McGowan. And he looks at a strike, nothing in one. McGowan was retired back in the first inning with a nice running catch by Maddox Houghton. Really extending a great weekend. Maddox made another outstanding diving catch last night, going to his left and catching a ball in right center field. So always good glove action out by Maddox Houghton. That's a slider that's going to stay inside and leaving the count at a ball and a strike. Houghton also had a couple of outstanding catches over the weekend. He had one against Liberty where he made a running catch over his shoulder. And that's going to catch the outside corner. Curveball, one and two. Houghton also with a terrific catch on Tuesday in the Pittsburgh game. Had to go way back into the left center field corner and flag down a ball. So he's been an outstanding defensive center fielder throughout his Bison's career, and especially this season. The 1-2 checks his swing. Did he go around? They ask first base umpire Todd Henderson, and he says no. So that'll be a two-ball, two-strike count on Kendall McGowan. Again, McGowan came in batting 279, four homers and 16 RBIs, those four homers leading the Mountaineers on the season. Here comes the 2-2 from Bierman. Swung and tapped towards short. Merced is going to glove it on the run, throw, slow throw, low throw, but scooped up by Malik Williams. So good play there. Merced was playing deep in the hole. Had to come in and glove it, got it out of his glove and flipped to first, and that'll be the first out of the inning. That'll bring up first baseman Robbie Young. Young grounded out to second baseman Brian Moore back in the second inning, so 0 for 1 on the day. 4 for 5 last night, though. He had a red-hot game last night. So the Bisons will see if they can cool him off here today. Again, came in as the leading hitter for the Mountaineers at 314. He looks at a fastball on the outside corner, no balls and one strike. Young is a 6'2", 205-pound senior from Louisville. Played at Davidson Academy and Garden City Community College. Good looking hitter in the box. The 0 1 is a slider that's going to stay outside, and that'll even the count at a ball and a strike. We will try to get you updated on some scores around the Atlantic Sun Conference and some area teams as we move along here today. And we'll update you about the standings. First, the 1 1 from Beerman. Swung on and foul straight back. It's a ball and two strikes. So if you're familiar with the Atlantic Sun Conference, they split into divisions this year a North and a South division. The Bisons are in the North Division, currently being led by Liberty at 8-1 on the season. Kennesaw State 7-2, Bellarmine 5-7, and seven, Lipscomb 4-8, and eight, and North Alabama 3-9. and nine. So that's the north side of the conference. Comes the 1-2 from Bierman. Swung on a hit in the air towards left field. Borum's coming over toward the line, and he's going to glove it for the second out of the inning. So a slider that was off the plate and coming back on, and Young poked it out for out number two. That'll bring up the right fielder, Philip Cole. Cole grounded out to the third baseman, Carter Smith, back in the second inning. He's 0 for 1 on the day after going 3 for 6 with three RBIs last night. So, again, having a good weekend so far as the junior, Philip Cole. Swings through that one, and it's nothing in one. On the south side of the Atlantic Sun Conference, you've got Florida Gulf Coast in first place with 7 and 2, Stetson at 5 and 1, North Florida 3 and 3, and Jacksonville at 0 and 9. The 0-1, he swings through that one. Taps a foul, I believe, but it's 0-2 now. And most of the teams playing within the conference this weekend. The Bison's playing this non-conference weekend series against Appalachian State, so we'll update you again on those scores from around the conference. But first, we await an 0-2 pitch from Dylan Bierman to Philip Cole, and he swings through that one, strike three. So quick inning for Bierman as he collects his second strikeout on the day and nothing doing for the Mountaineers in the top of the fourth. We head to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Your score, Lipscomb 1, Appalachian State 1. You're watching Lipscomb Bison's Baseball on YouTube Live.
will be four, five, and six for the Bisons. Malik Williams, Chaz Berlani, and Carter Smith to face Quentin Martinez, the left-hander who's gone all the way for the Mountaineers. Three innings, two hits, one run, one earned, three walks, and two strikeouts. And he's thrown just 43 pitches through the first three innings as well. So a real pitcher's duel underway here with both Bierman and Martinez having excellent outings. And we'll see what Malik Williams could do to start the Bisons off. He grounded out to the second baseman, Drumheller, back in the first inning. Starts him off with a fastball that runs away for a ball and no strikes. That fastball has a arm side action running away from these right-handed hitters, and so a live fastball off the arm of Martinez. Here comes the 1-0. Swings and fouls it back, so it'll be a ball and a strike. Again, Williams with a good night last night. He's two for five last night with two RBIs. Comes in batting 257. Just one home run on the season, but you know this young man has a lot of power, and he's hit a lot of foul balls that have been fairly close to homers this year. Here comes the 1-1, almost hits him. Fastball inside. They'll make the count two balls in one strike. Malik is a six foot four, 231 pounder out of Toronto, Canada. He played at Johnson County Community College before coming to Nashville. And here comes the 2-1, fastball that he taps foul. And that'll even the count two and two. So that was that tailing fastball running away from the right-handed hitters and in towards the left-handed hitters. Bisons with two left-handed hitters in the lineup today, Borum and Smith against the lefty Martinez. Here comes the 2-2 two -two pitch to Williams. And he catches the inside corner with that fastball. Williams didn't like the call, but that's going to be the first out of the inning, and that'll be the third strikeout of the day for Martinez. That'll bring up catcher Chaz Bertolani. He was at the plate in the first inning when the Bisons tried a delayed steal of home. Came back up in the second inning and drew a walk and was stranded. Again, Chaz comes in batting 302 on the season, one home run and 25 RBIs for the Bisons' sophomore catcher. Bottom of the fourth inning, Lipscomb and Appalachian State in a 1-1 pitcher's duel. Bertolani swings and fouls that one back, and it'll be no balls and one strike. And again, we thank you for joining us on YouTube Live. want to say hello to and pass along best wishes this afternoon to Bob and Wanda Williams, who are watching us with their grandson, Patrick, who's on the Bison's roster. 0-1 pitch, swung on and tapped foul, and that'll be no balls and two strikes. We always appreciate the chance to be joined by our family members who can't get here in person to Nashville and bring them these games. Tomorrow's game will also be on YouTube Live. First pitch is scheduled for 1 o'clock Central Time. Bertolani's in the hole 0-2. And, and here comes Martinez. Fastball misses down and away. It'll be a ball and two strikes. Again, Martinez really settling in. He struggled in the first inning, got to several three ball counts and seemed to have some trouble locating all of his pitches. But he's bounced back nicely and gotten into a groove here. And Done a very nice job for Coach Smith and the Mountaineers. Here comes the 1-2 to Bertolani. That's going to skip inside, and that'll make the count two balls and two strikes. Bertolani with a 366 on base percentage on the season. Knows the strike zone well. A lot of discipline that he shows up there, as most catchers typically do. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two, swung on and tapped towards first base. That jammed on the fist, but it went foul, and... Young will pick it up, and that will keep our count at 2-2. Two and two. As we mentioned, we'll try to bring you some scores from the Atlantic Sun Conference teams as well as some of the other area teams that are in action today. Lots of baseball action across college baseball. A lot of big series going on this weekend in conference play. But first, here comes the 2-2 two -two to Bertolani. Swings and fouls it out of play, and so Bertolani keeps battling up there and getting his hacks. That will keep the count 2-2. Two and two. So some other scores of Atlantic Sun Conference teams. Florida Gulf Coast has beaten Wright State 6-4 to four today. Kennesaw State has beaten Bellarmine 3-1. to 2-2, two -two, swung out, hit in the air towards right center field. Cole going over, still going over. He's not going to get there. That's going to get all the way to the wall. Bertolani rounding first, heading towards second. He's going to fire it back in, and Bertolani has a one-out double. So nice piece of hitting there for Bertolani. That was that fastball going away from him. He stayed on it, hit it all the way to the right center field wall, hit that ball well, and he's now at second base with one out for Carter Smith. 
That's grounded into a double play back in the second inning. And he'll bat now with Bertolani running at second. That's the third Bison's hit on the day. App State with two hits on the day. So both pitchers have been very effective. Both like to work quickly. We've barely been playing an hour now, and we're in the bottom of the fourth inning. So the game moving right along. So they've got to shift back on for Carter Smith. The shortstop Welch is on the right side or first base side of second base. Second baseman Drumheller pulled way over in the hole. First baseman Young is down the line. And back in the second inning, Smith hit the ball right at Drumheller. And he was able to start that double play. Here comes the 1-0 to Smith. Fastball is going to miss outside. And that'll make the count two balls and no strikes. The third baseman idle in a fairly normal position. So there's a big hole over on that left-hand side. There's no shortstop there. So if Smith were able to go the other way, he would certainly be able to get something through and likely get Bertolani pushed across here. So two balls, no strike for Carter Smith. Ty Jones waits on deck. The 2 O's a fastball just off the plate, 3-0. and So Martinez being careful with Smith here. And again, you think that fastball is going to play to Smith's advantage there, although it will play into the shift a bit because that fastball has been running in towards those left-handed hitters. But that one was well off the plate, and it's three balls and no strikes. And you'd think that Smith likely to take a pitch here since Martinez has missed with three straight. The 3-0 is over the inside corner, 3-1. and one. Again, that was moving, but it did catch the inside part of the plate. Some updated scores again from the A-Sun. Liberty is leading North Alabama 10-1 in the top of the eighth inning. North Florida plays Stetson this evening. And there's a listed North Florida and Jacksonville game that's been canceled. So it looks like there's just going to be one game today. This was one of those cross-weekend actions. But North Florida and Stetson will play one game later today. Here comes the 3-1 to Smith. Swings and hits it high in the air, but shallow. It's going to stay on the infield. Welch, the shortstop, is going to drift over. Behind his normal position, and Smith is going to be retired for the second out of the inning. So that will bring up Ty Jones now with two outs, and Bertolani out there at second base. Ty grounded out to the third baseman idle back in the second inning. Again, Jones hit a line shot ball last night to the right to the third baseman, hit the ball right on the screws, but it was right at third baseman idle. So Ty's been hitting the ball hard, and you got to believe that some of those Hard hit balls will start to find some holes. Good things tend to happen when you keep hitting the ball hard. But there are two outs. Runner in second is Bertolani. One-to-one -one game in the bottom of the fourth inning. Martinez with a long look in. Now he has his sign. That's a breaking ball. It's going to bounce up there. Arnold keeps it in front. Bertolani is not able to advance. So good play there by the catcher, Arnold, keeping that ball in front of him. That bounced well in front of the plate. A little bit of a shift on here for Jones as well. Third baseman Idle has pulled off the line a fair distance, and he's back. Shortstop Welch is deep in the hole, and the second baseman Drumheller shading the runner at second, but really staying closer to the bag. So there is a gap on the right side if Jones were able to go that way. Outfield is fairly straight away and deep. And here comes the 1-0. Off-speed pitch, and he swung through it. It'll be a ball and a strike. Like a change up there. Good location on the outside part of the plate. Some other area teams in action today. Austin P has beaten Tennessee Martin 10-6. Belmont has beaten Murray State 8-2. Austin P and Tennessee Martin and Murray State and Belmont will each play another game later this afternoon. So both of them playing double headers today. Middle Tennessee has beaten Western Kentucky three to nothing in the first game of a double header. In the second uh, game, that one's down low again. Again, Arnold does a good job to keep it in front of him. In the second game of that double header, Western Kentucky is leading Middle Tennessee five to three in the top of the seventh. So Middle Tennessee and Western playing a 
conference doubleheader. And in the bottom of the fifth inning, Tennessee is leading Vanderbilt two to nothing. Big series between those two teams, both ranked in the top five over in Knoxville this weekend. Mentioned that the Bisons will be over in Knoxville on the 27th playing a single game against the Volunteers. Here comes a 2-1 pitch to Ty Jones. Swings through it and fouls it back. Again, that looked like a curveball. And that'll make the count 2-2 two and two on Ty Jones. I believe that's got you up to date on all of the area and Atlantic Sun Conference teams who are in action so far today. Another big top five series this weekend. And Ole Miss is currently leading Mississippi State 9 to nothing in the top of the eighth inning after Mississippi State won the opening game last night 5-2. to two. Here comes the 2-2 two -two pitch to Ty Jones. Just missed inside with a fastball. That'll make the count full. So Martinez really wanted that pitch, but he didn't get the call. So it'll be three and two with two outs. Bertolani, your runner at second. Bottom half of inning number four. Lipscomb one, Appalachian State one. Maddox out and waits on deck. He would be next if Jones is able to extend the inning here, but he's going to await a payoff pitch from the senior left-hander, Quentin Martinez. And fastball on the last one. Let's see what he elects to do here on the 3-2 pitch. Breaking ball, tap towards third. Idle is coming in, feels it, gloves it, throws on to first, and stretched there by Young, and he's going to retire Jones. So the Bison strand their third base runner of the day. Nothing doing after picking up the hit from Bertolani, and we've played four full innings. Your score, Lipscomb 1, Appalachian State 1. You're watching Lipscomb Bison's Baseball on YouTube Live. We have one run on three hits, one error for the Lipscomb Bisons, one run on two hits, no errors for the Appalachian State Mountaineers. We head to the top of the fifth inning, and Dylan Bierman still on the mound for the Bisons. He's had an excellent start on, this, on the day. Four innings he's gone, two hits, one run, one earn, one walk, and two strikeouts. He's going to be pitching to 7, 8, and 9, Arnold, Leshock, and Welch for the Mountaineers here, top half of the fifth inning, one-to-one -one between Lipscomb and Appalachian State. Starts him off with a pitch off the plate. It'll be one ball, no strikes. Arnold flew out to center fielder Maddox Houghton back in the second inning. He's 0 for 1 on the day. Had one at bat last night and was 0 for 1, so he's 0 for 2 on the weekend. That looked like an off-speed pitch that he swung through. It'll be a ball and a strike. So App State has played a good schedule so far. They played a number of top 25 teams, power 5 teams. They played three-game series at East Carolina earlier in the season. Here comes the 1-1. Swung on and hit in the air to center field. Houghton takes a couple steps over to his right and he'll glove that for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up center fielder Leshock. He's also 0 for 1 on the day. He flew out to the right fielder Jones back in the third inning. So he's 1 for 5 on the weekend so far for Leshock. Mentioned the Mountaineer schedule. They've also played Wake Forest and NC State so far. They've still got Additional games coming up against NC State, and then they'll play a three-game series at Miami in the weekend in May. The slider over the outside corner for strike one. And then they'll also play at South Carolina in the midweek. So challenging schedule put together by Coach Smith for his Appalachian State Mountaineers in addition to their Sun Belt Conference games. 
swung on and hit in towards right center field. And Houghton just off his glove, diving attempt. Lee Shock's going to try to get to second, and he's going to get in there before the throw. So a terrific attempt from Houghton. He ranged far to his left, dove for the ball, had it in his glove, but it bounced out as he hit the ground, and I believe that's going to be a base hit. So we'll call that a double for Lee Shock, and that'll be the third Mountaineers hit on the day. And that'll put him at second base with one out for the shortstop Bailey Welch. Welch flew out to Houghton back in the second inning. So an outstanding running attempt there from Maddox Houghton. Just couldn't keep that one in the glove. And so Welch will bat with one out and a runner at second base. Again, Bierman only 47 pitches here as we work in the fifth inning. He's been very, very efficient on the day. Shows bunt, takes a slider off the plate. And that'll be a ball and no strikes. So after this weekend series, the Mountaineers will go home and host Charlotte on Tuesday. And then next weekend, they play three on the road at Troy. Those are conference games. And then they'll have that matchup against NC State on April 27th. So the Mountaineers on the road again next weekend. Here comes the 1-0 from Bierman. Like he took something off that one, but it stayed high and inside. Two balls and no strikes. We mentioned that the Bisons will be hosting Belmont this Wednesday. That's a 1 o'clock start. And then next weekend on the road in Atlanta to play three games at Kennesaw State, Friday at 4 p.m. Central, Saturday at 1 p.m., and Sunday at noon Central time. And that will follow with a visit to Tennessee on the 27th. That game will be a 5.30 p.m. Central start. That one's hit foul, and that will make the count two balls and one strike to Bailey Welch. Top of the order, and Peyton Idle waits on Dak as the Mountaineers have something going here in the top of the fifth inning. Got some activity down in the Bison's bullpen. Looks like a few, a few different guys are scrambling around. Nobody throwing yet, but Beerman has done an outstanding job. And we mentioned earlier the Bison's using a total of six pitchers last night, so they'd love to get an extended outing from Beerman, and he's done an excellent job here pitching into the fifth inning, giving up only one run. It's a two-ball, one-strike count on Bailey Welch. That's a breaking ball that's going to stay high, and it's going to be three balls and one strike. Wind again still blowing out. Pretty much towards straight left center field at this point. Outfield is pretty much straight away other than Houghton a step or two towards his right in center field. Second baseman Moore shifted over toward the bag. He's shading the runner there to try to cut down on that lead as Shock runs at second. Here comes the 3-1 from Bierman, and misses high with that one, so ball four. So that'll put two on now with one out, and we're back to the top of the order in Peyton Idle. He started off with a single back in the first inning, then got picked off, and he walked and was aboard in the third. So he's been on base twice today. That's after going two for six last night. So he has been on base four of his ten, sorry, four of his eight appearances on the, on the series. And on the base pass, LeShock has five steals and five attempts on the season, and Welch has four for four in stolen bases. So you got to believe that both of those guys can run a bit if Idle is able to put a ball in play. So two on, one out, one to one. Lipscomb and Appalachian stay tied in the top of the fifth inning. Bierman comes to the plate, swung on and hit foul. And he gets ahead of Peyton Idle, a ball, uh, no balls in one strike. Final game of this series tomorrow. First pitch schedule for 1 p.m. Central Time. Again, we'll be here on YouTube Live. We'll be happy to have you join us. If you can't make it to the ballpark, if you're in the area, please come out for some great Sunday afternoon college baseball between these two programs. Here comes the 0-1. Gets the call on the outside corner, nothing in two. Not sure that Idle agreed with that one, and it was close, but it's called a strike nonetheless, and quickly, Bierman has gotten ahead of Idle. No balls and two strikes. They shock your runner at second. Welch running at first. One out. And a no ball two strike count on Peyton Idle. Tried to go back to the same spot, missed a little further outside and low, didn't get that call, so it's a ball and two strikes. That looked like a fastball. Terrell waits on deck, the designated hitter. Again, overcast day here, lights are on, but it's pretty gloomy. No trace of blue sky or sunshine today at the ballpark. Here comes the one two from Bierman to Idle. Swung on and hit in the air to center field. Houghton takes back, still going back. Near the warning track, he's going to glove it. 
tagging at second and faking that he's going to go to third is Lay Shock, and he's going to hold there. So both runners hold. So a big second out in the inning as Idle is retired on that fly ball to center field, and that'll bring up the designated hitter, Andrew Terrell. Terrell struck out looking back in the first and then reached on an error in the third. So he's 0 for 2 on the day. He'll bat now with two outs and two on. Again, Terrell batting 235 on the season. No home runs and nine RBIs. He was two out of five last night, so he's two for seven on the weekend. And starting to throw in the Bison's bullpen is number 31, freshman right-hander Patrick Williams. Looks at a slider through there for strike one. Zuman's had excellent command today. Had only two walks, also has two strikeouts. He surrendered three hits. And the only run, courtesy of the solo home run from Jerome Heller back in the first inning. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. Swings through that one off speed pitch. And quickly he's ahead, nothing and two to Terrell. Again, Leshock running at second, Welch running at first, two outs, top of the fifth inning, and Lipscomb and Appalachian State tied at one. And Bierman has Andrew Terrell in a no ball two strike hole here. Update from the softball diamond again. Liberty still leading Lipscomb two to nothing in the bottom of the fourth inning, game two. Swings and th swings through that one and a big strike out there for Bierman as he gets Terrell for the second time today to end the threat. So the Mountaineers strand two more. They've stranded four on the day. We played four and a half innings in your score. Lipscomb won. And Appalachian State won. You're watching Lipscomb Bison's Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the home half of the fifth inning. Your score is Lipscomb 1, Appalachian State 1. Due up for the Bisons will be 8, 9, and 1. Houghton, Moore, and Borum to face left-hander Quentin Martinez, who's done an outstanding job here today for Coach Smith and the Mountaineers. He's worked four innings, giving up three hits, one run. It's an earned run. He's walked three and struck out three. He's thrown 66 pitches to get through those first four innings. So Houghton stands in to get things started here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Maddox grounded out. On a really nice play by second baseman Drumheller back in the third inning. So he's 0 for 1 on the day and 0 for 5 on the weekend. So Maddox ready to get untracked here. He gets set to face Martinez. Looks at an off-speed pitch in there for strike one. Again, one run and three hits for Appalachian State. No errors. One run, three hits, one error for the Bisons. Bottom half of the fifth inning after these two teams played 11 innings last night before Appalachian State came away with a 9-5 to five win. That one misses downstairs. Be a ball and a strike on Maddox Houghton. The 1-1. One, one. Off-speed pitch hit over third baseman Idle's head. That's going to get down the line. Houghton's going to round first and head towards second. McGowan's up with it. His throw into second is not in time. Close play. Good hustle all the way. And we'll score that as a double for Maddox Houghton. We hit that one just over the head of Idle. Skidded down the 
left field line. McGowan had a long way to come. Got there quickly, made a good throw to second, but Houghton with good speed legs it out and gets out there with nobody out, and that'll bring up second baseman Brian Moore. Brian was one of the hits of the day for the Bisons as he put down a great bunt in the third inning and reached on a base hit. So he's one for one on the day and two for six on the weekend. So we'll see how the Bisons elect to play it here with Houghton on at second. Houghton with good speed. He's four out of five in steal attempts for the season. And Moore is an excellent bunter, as mentioned above. So he's squaring. Puts it toward the first base side. Young is going to field it. He's going to try to go to the bag, and oh, they're going to call him out. Close play there. And Moore is going to be called out. So a collision over there. It was the second baseman, Drumheller, who came over to cover as Young went over to field it. Bang, bang play. Really good fielding play, but an outstanding sacrifice there by Brian Moore. So he'll be retired as the first out of the inning, but he does push Houghton all the way to third base. I thought he might have beaten that one out, although we won't have a replay. But it was an excellent bunt by Moore, as we mentioned. He's a really good bunter. He pushed that one down the first baseline. Young had to come over and field it. Flipped to this covering second baseman, Drumheller. It was a bang-bang play. They did call Moore out. There was a bit of a collision. But everyone seems to be okay. So Tiger Borum stands in. Maddox Houghton's at third base with the go-ahead run. And Borum looks at a breaking ball inside. One ball and no strikes. Tiger's 0 for 1 on the day. Walked and scored a run back in the first. And was called out on strikes back in the third. He's now one for three on the weekend and has been aboard with four walks. So he's been on base a number of times this weekend. And here comes the 1-0 pitch. Swings and hits it down the line foul. Just missed getting that down the first baseline. It'll be a ball and a strike. Third baseman Idle is playing pretty close to the bag over there at third. So he's not allowing Houghton to get much of a lead. Shortstop Welch and second baseman Drumheller are playing back. They'll concede the run if Borum's able to get it in the middle of the infield. But Idle is a step or two behind the bag at third, as is first baseman Young. So if Borum could get a ground ball in the middle of the field, he would definitely drive the run in here. Here comes the 1-1 from Martinez. He looks at a fastball in the outside corner, ball and two strikes. Great location there. And again, Martinez really settled in and done a very nice job. Uh, struggled a bit in the first inning, got into some three ball counts, but he has come back and pitched very effectively, as you would expect for this senior left-hander. He's got excellent numbers coming in on the season. We mentioned 31 strikeouts, 12 walks in 42 innings on the season. Here comes the 1-2 to Tiger Borum. Swung on and foul back out of play. That'll keep the count of ball and two strikes. Shortstop Robbie Merced waits on Dak. And again, if you're accustomed to watching the Bisons, you're accustomed to seeing Haddon Adams near the top of the lineup. Haddon is out of with an injury that he suffered in that Pittsburgh game on Tuesday. So... Adams was out of the lineup yesterday. He's out again today. Seems strange if you've watched the Bisons over the last three seasons not to see Haddon Adams somewhere near the top of that lineup because he's always either batting in the one, two, or three spots, it seems, and is, again, the preseason Atlantic Sun Conference Player of the Year. So a big loss not having him in there, but Tiger Borum is going to see if he can fill the void here. He awaits a one-two pitch from Quentin Martinez. Breaking ball stays down. Good play there by Arnold to keep it in front. Two and two. Again, Borum comes in batting 267 on the season. One home run and 15 RBIs. That home run was a big one. It was a grand slam that he hit out of here back a couple weekends ago. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Another breaking ball downstairs. Three and two. So... Borum has gotten the count worked full now. Again, shortstop Merced waits on deck. There are two outs. Alex Houghton is running over at third base. He led off the inning with a double. Correction, there's not two outs. There's only one out. I apologize. The scoreboard was wrong, and I went with that version of events. There's only one out on the sack bunt from Brian Moore. Here comes the playoff pitch. Stays high, ball four. So for the second time today, Borum is on courtesy of walk, and that is going to bring up Merced. Robbie has doubled off the right center field wall back in the first inning and then reached on a walk. So he's been on base twice today after reaching on two walks yesterday. So he's been on base four times this weekend already and had that big base hit back in the first inning. So runners at the corners now. 
One out. We'll see how Coach Forehand elects to play it here. Merced known to drop a bunt down as well. Again, comes in batting 250 on the season. Two home runs and six RBIs. Good speed on first with Borum. He's 7 out of 11 on stolen base attempts on the season. So we'll see how the Bisons elect to play it. Good speed on first with Borum. Good speed at third with Houghton. It's first and third. You know, we've got a lot of signing going on here with the Mountaineers. As they're trying to decide how to play this first and third play. Martinez up to 76 pitches on the day. Don't see any activity down in the Mountaineers' bullpen, so I think they're going to go with him for as long as he can keep him in the game, and he's done an outstanding job so far this afternoon, only allowing one run through the first four and a third innings. Looks like Merced showed Bunn and pulled it back, but the pitch was called a strike, so it'll be no balls and one strike there. Looked like a safety squeeze, which... Meant that the runner at third was going to read that, make sure it got down before he took off. And obviously Merced was trying to bunt that toward the right side to give Houghton a chance to get down the line. So third baseman Idle playing even with a bag at third, a couple steps in. First baseman Young obviously holding the runner at first and double play depth up the middle with Welch and Drumheller. And here comes the 0-1 pitch to Merced. Not bunting, swings and fouls it straight back, and it's 0-2. It was a fastball, and he came right at him there. Again, good speed on the base pass, and Merced with good speed in the batter's box. So tough man to double up, but he's in an 0-2 hole here from Martinez. That was Martinez's fourth walk on the day, so a little bit uncharacteristic for him, as we mentioned, normally having really outstanding control. Here comes the 0-2 pitch to Merced inside. Fastball will stay in, and it's a ball and two strikes on Robbie Merced. Designated hitter Chris Bashler waiting on deck. Again, one out, runners at the corners. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning, and Lipscomb and Appalachian State are tied up one-to-one -one in a pitcher's duel here. Borum is running. Ball's tapped toward the right side. First baseman Young is going to field it. Come home, and not in time. Houghton gets under the tag, and the Bisons take a 2-1 lead. So the ball was hit slowly to the first baseman, Young. He didn't hesitate. He came home, but the throw was a little bit up the third baseline, and that allowed Houghton to slide under the tag. Borum was running on the pitch, so he advances to second. They're going to give Merced a base hit, and so he's on at first. So first and second now with one out, and the Bisons take a one-run lead. Tough luck play there for the Mountaineers. It was soft contact, but because the ball was hit slowly, Young got it up, threw home, but the Throw was up the line enough to allow Houghton to get down the line and slide in. So it's 2-1, to one, Lipscomb leading App State. Borum running at second, Merced running at first, and Bachelor stands in now. Still one out in the inning. Bachelor was a strikeout victim in the first and grounded out in the third. So he's 0-2 for 2 on the day against Martinez. Swung on and hit in the air to right field. Cole going back. He's going to settle under it now. The runners are going to tag. They're both going to try to advance. Throw's going to come to second, and Merced's going to get in there. So Borum advanced to third, and Merced got down to second. I think a good throw would have probably had Merced there, but the throw came offline, and Drumheller had to come off the bag to catch it. So Bachelor is retired for the second out of the inning. He hit that ball well toward the warning track in right field. So Borum advances to third, Merced to second, and that'll bring up Malik Williams, who'll bat with two outs and two men on base. Malik grounded out in the first and was called out on strikes in the fourth. So he's 0 for 2 on the day. 2 for 7 on the weekend, has a couple RBIs, and he's going to get a chance to swing it here with two outs. Bisons with a run home on a hit already in this inning. They've taken that 2 to 1 lead, and they're threatening to get more here. The fastball is going to stay outside. It's going to be a ball and no strikes to Malik Williams. So again, in this inning, Houghton doubled to lead off the inning. Moore sacrificed him to third. Then Tiger Borum walked, and Robbie Merced hit a ball that couldn't be handled, and he reached on base. And then Chris Bachelor hit a sacrifice fly to advance the runners. That one's off the plate, and that's going to be two balls and no strikes on Malik Williams.
Merced's ball went to first the first base, and they tried to come home to get the runner, didn't get him, and so that allowed the Bisons to push across a run and the runners to advance. Both runners tagging, advancing on the fly ball off the bat of Bachelor. Here comes the 2-0 pitch to Malik Williams. Swung on, hit hard down the left field line. That's inside the line. That's going to score a pair. Borum comes in to score. Merced's going to come in to score. Ball's all the way in the corner, and Malik Williams is going to jog in with a two-out, two-RBI double. So big hit off the bat of Malik Williams there. Very similar to what he hit last night. He absolutely hammered that ball down the left field line. No chance for third baseman idle, and that got all the way down into the corner. And again, Borum easily able to score from third, Merced jogging in from second. So the Bisons have scored three times in the inning, and they now lead four to one. They've got two base hits in the inning, and that'll bring up the catcher, Chaz Bertolani. Chaz has walked and doubled on the day, so he is one for one and been on base both times. He'll bat now with two outs. Lipscomb now with four runs on five hits, and they lead four to one over Appalachian State. Ball misses down low. So again, the control from Martinez hasn't been quite as sharp this inning. Gave up the double to Houghton. Sacrificed Bunta Moore, and then he walked Borum. And that's going to lead to a mound visit here. And so while we have that mound visit, we'll go back and visit our scoreboard. Again, with the Atlantic Sun Conference scores on the day. Again, Florida Gulf Coast has beaten Wright State 6-4. to four. Kennesaw State has beaten Bellarmine 3-1, to one, and Liberty has beaten North Alabama 15-1. to one. one other action in ASUN play is North Florida at Stetson. That'll be at 6.30 tonight. Some of the other area games, Vanderbilt has come back and is now leading Tennessee 4-3 to three in the bottom of the seventh. Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee split a doubleheader. Middle Tennessee won the first game 3-0. to zero. And Western Kentucky came back for a 5-4 win in the second game. Belmont has defeated Murray State 8-2 in game one of a doubleheader. They're in the second inning scoreless in the second game of that. And future A-Sun member Jacksonville State and Eastern Kentucky are playing this weekend. J Eastern Kentucky won the first game 9-5. In the top of the six, Jacksonville State is leading Eastern Kentucky 4-1. So both of those teams joining the Atlantic Sun Conference next year, and they're playing a a game this weekend. We're ready to go back to work here. The count is one ball and no strikes on Chaz Bernalani. Malik Williams is running at second. The Bisons have pushed across three runs this inning. There are two out. Bertolani swings through an off-speed pitch, and it's no balls and one strike. Martinez now up to 85 pitches here in the fifth inning, and we're seeing some activity down in the uh, Appalachian State bullpen. Again, yeah, Martinez has done an excellent job on the day, but his control left him a little bit this inning, and the Bisons have strung together a couple of hits and a sacrifice bunt. Here comes the 1-1 to Bertolani. Fastball off the plate. It's two balls and one strike. So to recap the inning, Maddox Houghton started with a double. Brian Moore sacrificed him to third. Tiger Borum walked. Bobby Merced then hit a ball towards first base that was thrown home, not in time. That allowed... Runners to advance, and then Chris Bachelor hit a fly ball to right field that again got the runners over to second and third, and Malik Williams doubled them home. So three runs in in the inning for the Bisons on two hits, and Bertolani awaits the 2-1 from Martinez. Again, breaking ball stays down low, and it's 3-1 and one now on Chaz. So that seems to be one difference this inning with Martinez. He hasn't been able to land that breaking ball the way that he was back in Second, third, and fourth inning. So three and one on Bertolani. Carter Smith waits on deck. Lipscomb leading Appalachian State four to one, bottom half of the fifth inning. The three one fastball just off the plate, ball four. So Bertolani walks for the second time today, and that'll bring Carter Smith to the plate with the runners on first and second. Carter hit into a double play back in the second and then popped out in the fourth. So he is 0 for 2 on the day. I think the right-hander Matthew Maldonado is throwing a little bit down in the Bison's bullpen. Let's 
So two on, two out. Carter Smith batting. Malik Williams running at second. Chaz Bertolani running at first. Smith looks at a fastball off the plate. One ball, no strikes. Again, shift on for Smith as shortstop Welch is over on the first base side of the bag at second. The second baseman Drumheller deep in the hole between first and second, and the first baseman Young a couple steps off the line. So a heavy pull shift in the infield. Interestingly enough, the outfield is not shifted. They're pretty much straight away, and the third baseman Idle is playing in normal position. So big hole in the normal shortstop spot for Carter Smith. Here comes the 1-0. Swings and tries to go that way and fouls it on the left side. I think that's going to get out of play. And it just does. Barely hits the wall of the bullpen. Idle sort of jogged over after it. He might have had a play if he were able to be there, but nonetheless, it'll go down as a strike, so it'll be one ball and one strike on Carter Smith. Update from softball. Liberty now leading Lipscomb 4 to nothing in the top of the fifth inning. Again, that game's on ESPN+. Plus. So we've got a one ball, one strike count. Two on, two out for Carter Smith. Malik Williams running at second. Chaz Bertolani running at first. They're not holding him on at first. That's called a strike. That was a pitch over the black of the plate for sure. So one ball, two strikes on Carter Smith. Again, if you're just tuning in, the Bison's wearing teal jerseys today as a fundraiser for sexual assault awareness. These jerseys will be auctioned off if you'd like to bid on one of the jerseys. You can own it. Go to LipscombSports.com for more details and contribute to this very worthy cause. So the Bison's wearing the teal jerseys for the first time in recent memory, I believe. Here comes the 1-2 to Carter Smith. And he swings through a fastball, strike three. So Martinez is able to come back and get the strikeout, but the Bisons do some damage. They score three runs on two hits. They do leave two on base. They've left five total. But after five innings, new score, Lipscomb four and Appalachian State one. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the top half of the sixth inning. Lipscomb leading Appalachian State 4-1, to one, and right-hander Dylan Bierman is back on the mound. He's had an excellent outing so far. He's gone five innings, three hits, one run, one earned, walked two, and struck out three. And he'll be facing the heart of the Mountaineers' order with three, four, and five, Drumheller, McGowan, and Young here in the top half of the sixth inning. Four runs, five hits, one errors for the Bisons. One run, three hits, no errors for the Mountaineers, and Bierman will face off against Drumheller to get us started in the top of the sixth inning. He looks at a ball outside, one ball, no strikes. I'm joined by my colleague, Justin Einstein. Justin, welcome to the booth. Glad to have you here to do a little color for a couple innings. Really solid inning there for the Bisons, breaking through to get three runs in the bottom of the fifth after a really good pitcher's duel. Both pitchers doing a really good job so far today. Absolutely. They've uh, both really commanded the strike zone well. Uh, you know, uh, with, with Malik coming up and getting that big hit and good fundamental baseball by the Bisons, uh, they're really getting it done. That's tap foul. It'll be a ball and a strike here on Drumheller. Drumheller is one for two on the day. Had a home run to straight away center field back in the bottom of the first inning and then flew out in the third. So one for two on the day. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. All-speed pitch stays outside and high. It'll be two and one. Drumheller, as we mentioned, 0 for 6 last night, but he's hit the ball well a couple of times here today. And he comes in batting 289 with three homers and 24 RBI. So you know last night was a bit of an aberration for him. 2-1 foul straight back. Two and two. One of the things that's impressed me about Bierman today is he's really been able to locate his off-speed stuff. He's used to both look like a slider and a changeup that he's gotten in and kept these hitters off balance. 
No, he absolutely has. You know, Bierman's not a power guy. He, he really has to command the zone to be successful, and he's done a great job of doing that today. Surrendered only three hits on the day. He's got a 2-2 count against Drumheller here. And this looks like a curveball or slider misses inside. That'll run the count full on Drumheller. Three balls and two strikes. Bierman currently sitting on only 58 pitches, getting through five innings and 58 pitches, a really efficient outing. And we mentioned that's big for the Bisons, having to use six guys last night. So good for the bullpen to get some off time here. Swings and taps that foul. Three balls, two strikes. Yeah, absolutely, Doc. If we can get uh, you know one more inning out of, out of Bierman here, I think the coaches would be very, very pleased. Yeah, this is his longest outing, I believe, on the season, and he's done an excellent job. Again, six foot one, two hundred and five pound junior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and he's got a full count on Luke Drumheller, the second baseman for the Mountaineers. Swings and taps it towards Williams. He gloves it backhand. He's going to take it himself, and that's the first out of the inning as Drumheller is retired. And that'll bring up left fielder Kendall McGowan. McGowan's 0 for 2 on the day. He was retired with a nice running catch by Maddox Houghton in the first inning, and then he grounded out back in the set in the fourth inning. So he's 0 for 2 on the day, and 1 for 6 on the weekend for McGowan, who came in batting 279. Again, team leading four home runs and 16 RBIs for McGowan. And Bierman gets ahead. I think that's another thing he's really done well today, Justin. He's gotten ahead a lot of these hitters. Absolutely. When the Bisons tend to struggle, they're always falling behind, and, th and that first pitch strike can't uh, overstate the importance of getting that done. Here comes the 0-1 from Bierman. Swan on a tap foul, and quickly he's ahead again, 0-2. So Bierman, again, has worked five and a third innings. He's given up just three hits, the one run on the home run. He's walked two and struck out three. So a very, very efficient outing for Dylan Bierman, doing exactly what Coach Forehand wanted him to do today to keep the Bisons in this one as they lead 4-1, to one, top of the sixth inning. So he's got McGowan in an 0-2 hole here. And he swings and looks like he tapped that one just foul. Looks like a slider that he had to go down and just spoil to stay alive. We mentioned that McGowan earlier retired from that running catch. Maddox Houghton's made a couple of outstanding plays here today and almost had an unbelievable highlight reel play when he went to his left and dove and the ball just popped out. Yeah, the defense for both sides has been spectacular in the series. Yeah, both teams playing really good, solid defense, particularly on the outfield. Here comes the 0-2 from Bierman, and he swings and taps that one foul. Just stayed alive. That was off the plate. So the count will remain 0-2 on McGowan. The first baseman, Robbie Young, waits on deck. You know, one thing to note is the hitters have looked very uncomfortable in the box today against Bierman. You know, a lot of swings that where they're, they're reaching for the ball or, or just barely getting a piece. So, so Bierman's doing a great job of keeping these hitters off balance. Yeah, I think the key is he's disrupting their timing and they're not reading that spin very well. So a really good point that they've not made a lot of solid contact. Here comes the 0-2, and that's swung on and hit in the air to center field. Houghton's going to go back to his left, but he's going to get under it, and that'll be the second out of the inning as McGowan is retired for out number two. So that'll bring up Robbie Young, first baseman. Robbie grounded out back in the second inning and then flew out in the fourth inning, so he's 0-2 for two on the day after going 4-5 for five last night. So the Bisons have done a good job Again, Young, the leading hitter on the Mountaineers team, came in batting 314, three homers and 17 RBIs on the season. Good-looking left-handed stick. He's one of three left-handed bats in the lineup, and he hits this one on the ground towards Malik Williams. He's going to glove it. And another incredibly quick, efficient inning for Dylan Bierman as the Mountaineers have nothing doing here in the top of the six. So we played five and a half. Your score, Lipscomb four and Appalachian State one. You're watching Lipscomb Bison's Baseball on YouTube Live.
We head to the home half of the sixth inning. Four runs on five hits and one error for the Bisons. One run, three hits, no errors for the Mountaineers. And a new pitcher is on the mound for Appalachian State. He is the tall right-hander Jason Kornatzer, a 6'7", 195-pound redshirt junior out of Waxhaw, North Carolina, and Marvin Ridge High School. Kornatzer is on for his 11th appearance on the season. He's worked 15 and a third innings, given up 22 hits, 15 runs, 14 earned, five walks, 26 strikeouts, and only 15 innings. And opponents are batting 319 against him. He does have an 8.22 ERA and a 1-0 one loss record. So he'll be facing 7 8 9 of the Bisons, Jones, Houghton, and Moore as a, they stand in to face Kornatzer here. And he throws a breaking ball that stays high for ball one against Ty Jones. Jones has grounded out twice on the day. He's 0 for 2. Still looking for his first base hit on the weekend. And Kornatzer's 1 0 pitch is a slider that goes downstairs 2 0 on Jones. Kornatzer looks to be a hard thrower with a a lot of movement, and obviously with 26 strikeouts and only 15 innings, you you know he's got some pop on the ball. He does indeed, and and these Bison hitters really need to sit on the fastball at this point. Uh, you know that's the bread and butter for this pitcher here from Appalachian State, and if they can sit on that fastball, we can see if we can get something done here. Here comes the 2-0. Jones grounds it to third. Idle is up with it. He's going to throw to first, stretching to make the play as Young, and so Jones is retired. For the third straight time today on a ground out to third base. He needs to find a new spot to try. He's hitting it to third base three straight times. So that'll bring up Maddox Houghton. Maddox got that big inning started in the fifth for the Bisons as he doubled off the right center field wall. It's one for two on the day as he grounded out on a nice play by second baseman Drumheller back in the third inning. So one for two on the day for Maddox. He'll bat with one out and the base is empty. Again, Lipscomb leading Appalachian State four to one in the bottom half of the sixth inning. It's a fastball that's going to miss low. One ball, no strikes. We don't have a radar gun up here, but I would guess that uh, Cornanter appears to be throwing in the low 90s from what I can tell here, Justin. Yeah, I would absolutely agree. He's got a nice slider to complement that fastball. If he can locate, uh, maybe a little bit of trouble here for, for the Bisons. And that's that slider over the outside corner. A good pitch there, a ball and a strike on Houghton. You can... Closed the book on Martinez. He went five innings, gave up five hits, four runs, four earned, five walks, and four strikeouts. So a little bit uncharacteristic for Martinez. He came in with only 12 walks in 42 innings, and he walked five today. That one misses off the plate. It's going to be two balls and one strike on Houghton. Martinez really settled in, did a good job through the first four innings. The Bisons got to him a little bit in that fifth inning, and he ends up throwing 94 pitches on the day. And turns it over now to Kornatzer. And that's going to miss and make the count three balls and one strike for Houghton. Second baseman Moore waits on deck. Wind has died down for the moment now. The flag is hanging limply out in left center field. Comes the 3-1, and that's going to miss inside as well, ball four. So Houghton is on for the second time today, courtesy of the walk. Second baseman Brian Moore is going to come up. Brian's bunted both times. He bunted for a base hit back in the second, and then he bunted in the fifth inning, a sacrifice bunt that was a bang-bang play at first. He almost beat that one out, so... Brian, one for one officially on the day after going one for five last night. And we'll see again if the Bisons want to play small ball here. As we know, Bono Moore can bunt. Houghton runs well. Four steals and five attempts on the season for Maddox Houghton. And two really good bunts put down by Brian Moore today. No, absolutely. And, and you know, that's been one of the differences today as opposed to, to uh, some of the other games we've been been privy to here is, is the ability to get that bunt down in those key situations has, has really been an asset for the Bisons today. He looks at a strike over the inside corner. He didn't square with that one, so it's no balls and one strike. Again, infield at double play depth. Third baseman idle is step so behind the bag, but careful to look at that bunt. Outfield straight away and fairly normal depth. Left fielder McGowan maybe a step or two deeper than normal with the wind blowing that way now. And here comes the 0-1 to Brian Moore. And he's running on the pitch, and Moore fouls it back. So a hit and run on there with Houghton running. And Moore fouls it back to the screen, and that'll make the count no balls and two strikes. So Houghton with a decent jump there. And the right-hander Cornets are obviously maybe a shade easier to run on than the left-hander Martinez, who the Bisons really did not try to run a lot on. He was pretty quick to the plate. One thing you've seen from both of these pitchers today, Justin, both sides, rather, have worked pretty quickly. They have. And, and to your point, Doug, you know, this pitcher being a, a six seven righty, He's got about a four count to the plate, so we should be able to take a base on him. Here comes the 0-2. 
Swung on and hit back up the middle, off the glove of Drumheller, but shortstop's going to glove it and throw wow. to first. What a play. Phenomenal double play there. Outstanding double play. The ball flew off the glove of Drumheller right to Welch, who gloved it, stepped on second, and threw to first. So you got to tip your hat there for an outstanding play, and that's going to end the Bison's sixth inning. So nothing doing for the Bison's. We head to the seventh inning. Your score, Lipscomb 4 and Appalachian State 1. You're watching Lipscomb Bison's Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the top half of the seventh inning. Lipscomb leading Appalachian State 4-1. to one. We welcome you back to Ken Dugan Field. Doc Allen joined by Justin Einstein. We're set to bring you the seventh inning where Dylan Bierman is back out on the mound for the Bisons. He's had an outstanding start today. Six innings, given up only three hits. One run, one earned run. That was a solo home run back in the first. He's walked two and struck out three and has used only 71 pitches to get through that six innings that he's worked. So he'll work here against six, seven, and eight. Cole, Arnold, and Layshock as the Bisons cling to this 4-1 to one lead. And he starts him off with what looks like a slider off the plate, ball one. Cole is 0-2 for 2 on the day. He grounded out back in the second inning, and he struck out swinging in the fourth. So 0-2 for 2 on the day. He did go 3-6 for 6 last night, so he's 3-8 for 8 on the weekend with three RBIs. That one's going to stay low, and it'll need two balls and no strikes on Philip Cole. Came in batting 206, two homers with 19 RBIs on the season. So can't say enough about the job Dylan Bierman has done today. He's really worked quickly and gotten ahead of these hitters, induced contact. That swung on and tapped towards third. Smith gloves it. He's going to throw on to first, and first out of the inning is retired. Yeah, Bierman continues just to be so efficient in getting that, that leadoff batter out and, and really putting the Bisons in a great position to for another quick inning here. So that'll bring up the catcher, Carson Arnold. He flew out back in the second inning and flew out again in the fifth inning, so he's 0 for 2 on the day. Again, Arnold getting the start today after Cross caught the game last night. And actually looks like we may have a pinch hitter here. Instead of Arnold, this may be, I believe they announced Dalton Williams. Yep, pinch hitter is going to be number 19, Dalton Williams, a six foot one, 210 pound redshirt sophomore out of Dallas, Texas. He's going to bat here for Carson Arnold. And he swings and hits the first pitch in center field. Houghton's going to take a couple steps over. And he's going to glove it for the second out of the inning. So, again, very efficient by Dylan Bierman. And he retires Dalton Williams for the second out of the inning. So that will bring up center fielder Alex Leshock. Leshock is one for two on the day. He flew out to right field back in the third and then doubled and was stranded in the fifth. So one for two on the day. After going one for four last night, he bats with two outs and the bases empty in the top of the seventh inning. And Bierman starts him off with a slider for strike one. So again, can't say enough good things about what Bierman's doing, getting ahead of these hitters, using his off-speed pitch, really commanding both sides of the plate. And as you mentioned earlier, Justin, keeping these hitters off balance. Yeah, Coach Corhan can't be happier with what Dylan Bierman's doing right now. You know, the, the bullpen is a bit taxed at the moment. Uh, some arms are down, and, and we really needed a, a strong start here from Bierman, and he's giving it to the team. He's got Leshock in an 0-2 count now. Two outs, bases empty. Top of the seventh inning, and Lipscomb leading App State 4-1. to one. And the 0-2 is a fastball off the plate, ball and two strikes. Shortstop Welch would be next if they can extend the inning here. And again, Bierman at only 75 pitches as he works six and two-thirds innings. So terrific outing for Bierman, clearly 
his longest work of the season and one of the longest starts that we've seen from one of the Bison starters. Here comes the one two to Le Shock. Slider just off the plate. He almost pulled the trigger on that one. It's a good spot and a good pitch, but it'll even the count at two and two. Yeah, Beerman continues to just look so relaxed out there. You know, he has command of everything that he's throwing and is just throwing with the, with the utmost confidence. 2-2 two -two is swung on and hit foul. That's going to get out of play on the right side, and that'll keep the count at two balls and two strikes. Reminder that these two teams will play tomorrow, third game of this series. It's scheduled for a 1 o'clock first pitch. We'll be on the air about 12.55 Central Time, 12.55 p.m. here on YouTube Live. So join us for game three. The Appalachian State Mountaineers captured a 9-5 victory in 11 innings last night. Lipscomb leading 4-1 here in the top of the seventh. Here comes the 2-2. Almost hit him. And the count will go full at three balls and two shock, two strikes only shock. I believe he was a little shocked at how <laughs> close that one came. He was. And this is one of the few full counts that Bierman's had today. You know, he's, he's really dominated today. Let's see if he can get the job done here. Yeah, looking back, I think I only find one other three ball count that he's gone to. And that swung on and hit in the air to center field. Houghton's going to take a couple steps back. And it's another 1-2-3 inning. So another 1-2-3 inning for Dylan Bierman. Nothing doing for the Mountaineers here in the top of the seventh. We head to the home half of the seventh inning. Your score, Lipscomb 4, Appalachian State 1. You're watching Lipscomb Bison's Baseball on YouTube Live. Our seventh inning stretch is done. We head to the bottom half of the seventh. Your score is Lipscomb 4 in Appalachian State 1. And the Bisons will send up the top of the order, Borum, Merced, and Bachelor to face Jason Kornatzer. He came on in the last inning, worked a scoreless inning with one walk and no strikeouts. On a relief for the starter, Quentin Martinez. So Borum stands in, batting for the fourth time today. He's walked twice and struck out, so he's been on base two times. Bisons are nursing a 4-1 to lead here as we go into the bottom of the seventh inning. And the fastball off the plate for ball one to Tiger Borum. Yeah, it's one of the distinct differences today between Appalachian State and Lipscomb is, is the Appalachian State pitchers have had a, a difficult time getting ahead in the count here and have been working from behind all day. And that one's off the plate as well. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah, we mentioned that Martinez has only walked 12 batters in 42 innings coming in. He wound up with five walks today, so a little bit uncharacteristic for them. And that allowed the uh, Bisons to extend a couple of innings and a couple of key hits on the day. Here comes the 2-0 to Borum. Swung on and hit towards first. Young gloves it. He's going to go over and take it himself. And that'll retire Borum for the first out of the inning. So that'll bring up Robbie Merced. Robbie's had a big day. He's been on base three times. He's doubled, singled, and been on base with a walk. He scored a run. So good to see Merced swinging it today. Came in batting 250, two homers and six RBIs on the day. But he's looked very confident in the box today. Doubled off that right field wall back in the first and then hit a single in the sixth inning, the fifth inning rather, that was part of that Bison's three-run rally. He hit it towards first base. First baseman elected to come home, try to get an out, and throw was up the line. So Merced's Helped to keep that inning moving forward, and he bats here with one out, base is empty, looks at a fastball off the plate, one ball, no strikes. And while the Bisons only have five hits here on the day, that they have seemed much more aggressive at the plate today as opposed to some, some games, especially last night. Um, you know, the, they really seem much more confident here at the plate. Yeah, good approaches all up and down. Here comes the 1-0 to Merced, and that's a slider. It's going to be called a strike, ball and a strike on Merced. Bachelor waits on deck. 
from Sam with another couple of outstanding defensive plays today. He's made ex excellent plays all around at shortstop. Fun to watch this young man play the glove at the shortstop position. Cornancer is ready to bring the 1-1 and hits him with it. That's kind of smart a little bit. That was a fastball that got in on him quickly. So Merced is on for the fourth time today. He's been on base every single time he's gotten up there. At least that one got him squarely in the back, it looked like, but that's going to probably leave a mark. It sure will, will but, uh, you know, it's good to see Robbie okay and down there at first base. So I'll bring up Chris Bachelor. Chris has had a quiet day so far. He struck out, he's grounded out, and he's flied out, so he's 0 for 3 on the day. And Merced will be on at first base with one out. Robbie's 4 for 4 on steals on the season, so we'll see if the Bisons elect to try to manufacture something here. Mentioned corn answer a little slower to the plate than the starter Martinez was. Merced not running, and it's a curveball that stays high. And it's a ball and no strikes to Bachelor. A little bit of a shift on for Bachelor. The second baseman Drumheller shading the middle just a bit. Third baseman Idle is pulled way off the line, which is a little unusual to see for Bachelor, who's a pretty straight pull hitter. So there's a big gap down that third baseline if Bachelor were able to guide one there. You'd expect Bash to get something to hit here with Malik Williams being so hot right now. Merced's going, pitch is off speed, it's down, and it's going to be in there. So an off speed pitch downstairs, Merced had a good jump. And he's going to be at second base now with a stolen base. Pitch was called a ball, so it's a ball and a strike now on Bachelor, I believe. And for Merced, that'll be his fifth stolen base on the season. He's five out of five in steals. A pretty good jump on that one. So the Bisons have a runner in scoring position with one out, one ball, one strike count on Chris Bachelor. Swung on and hit foul out of play, and that'll make the count a ball and two strikes. Second baseman holding the runner there at second base, so leaving that right side wide open for Bash to get the job done here. Let's see if he can get a pitch to handle. Four runs, five hits, one error for the Bisons. One run, three hits, no errors for App State today. Both pitchers very effective through the early part of the game. And now they'll turn it over to the bullpen. This is the second arm of the day for the Mountaineers. And it's a one ball, two strike count to Chris Bachelor. Slider just off the plate, two and two. Good pitch, good spot, but just a little off the plate. Bachelor was able to hold up. I think that's one of the things, Justin, you see. Chris Bachelor, an experienced player, fourth season here, just doesn't swing at a lot of bad pitches. He's gonna, he knows the zone well, has good bat discipline. He does indeed, and that's, you know, th that's been evident in the fact that, you know, he can work that count, uh, work deep in the count, and get a good pitch to hit. Here comes the 2-2. Swung on and hit towards center field. That's gonna hold up for Le Shock. Merced's not gonna be able to tag, and so. Bachelor will be retired on the fly out for the second out of the inning. So that'll bring up Malik Williams. You mentioned Malik with that big two RBI double in the fifth inning. That was an important part of the Bison's rally. He's also struck out and grounded out on the day. He's now three for eight on the weekend. It's got four RBI. So good to see Malik heating up here as we enter the latter part of the season. Came into today's action batting 257. So two outs. Runner at second base is Merced with good speed. And Malik Williams will face Jason Kornatzer, the second Appalachian State pitcher of the day. On in relief, the starter, Quentin Martinez. And that's a fastball over the outside corner. Good location for that fastball. No balls in one strike. Just as we mentioned on the last batter, Justin, they're giving him that hole between first and second as the second baseman, Drumheller, Shading the runner at second, but leaving a bit of a gap over there. And we've seen Malik go that way recently. He started to hit the ball to the right side some. We have. Malik's becoming much more of a complete hitter and using the entire field. It's nice to see. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. Won't be made. Inside move. And they're going to chase Merced back. Nobody was there. Wind's really picked up now. The flag's blowing out hard to left center field, and we know how strong Malik is. If he can get a ball up, he won't need the wind's help to get it out of here. He really hammered that ball in the last inning that went down the left field line for a double after hitting a ball hard last night. So good to see Malik making some hard contact here as he enters the latter part of the season. And we we're waiting an 0-1 pitch. Swung on and hit towards center field. Lashak is going to come in, and he's going to glove it for the third out of the inning. So... The Bisons wind up stranding a runner. 
That's the sixth runner they've stranded on the day, but we've completed seven full innings in your score, Lipscomb 4, Appalachian State 1. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live. We're headed to the top of the eighth inning. Lipscomb is leading Appalachian State 4-1, to one, and Dylan Bierman is back out. Seven outstanding innings for Bierman so far today. Three hits, one run, one earned, two walks, and three strikeouts. He's needed only 82 pitches to get through those first seven innings. And here in the eighth, he'll face nine, one, and two. Welch, Idle, and Terrell for the Mountaineers. My thanks to Justin Einstein for joining us for a couple innings of color commentary there. We'll try to take you the rest of the way here as we... Gets set to play in the top of the eighth inning. And Bierman hits one, or, or I'm sorry, that's going to hit down the left field line for Welch. That's going to be a double all the way into the corner. He's running to second. Borum's over to pick it up. And so Welch is on with a leadoff double. Only the fourth hit of the day for the Mountaineers. But he hammered that one well. That was his first hit in three tries at the plate today. And that'll turn us back to the top of the order and Peyton Idle. Idle singled back in the first and then was picked off. He reached via a walk and then he flew out. So he's been on base two times. And he'll bat now with Welch running at second. Welch is four for four on steals on the season. And so he stands out there with nobody out here in the top of the eighth inning. And looks like Coach Forehand's going to stroll out to the mound, and that may be all for Dylan Bierman. But what an outstanding effort for Bierman this afternoon. Again, longest outing of the season when you have to tip your cap to this junior right-hander who has just been magnificent on the mound for the Bisons today. And so, indeed, we will have a pitching change. We'll step aside while that happens, and we'll be back right after this short break. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live.
The new pitcher for the Bisons is freshman left-hander Tanner Morgan, 5'11", 185-pounder out of Brentwood, Tennessee, prepped here at Christ Presbyterian Academy. And Morgan is going to come on with nobody out in the eighth inning and the leadoff runner on at second base. Morgan actually pitched last night. He did go a third of an inning, gave up one hit, one run, one earned, and was the losing pitcher, faced only two batters last night. This will be his sixth appearance on the season. He's worked a total of three innings. He's given up two hits, one run, one earned run, had three strikeouts and no walks. So he's in there to face the left-hander Peyton Idle, the leadoff batter for Appalachian State, who has singled, reached on a walk, and flied out to center field. So Idle will be batting. Your runner at second is Bailey Welch. He's there with a leadoff double. And again, Lipscomb leading Appalachian State 4-1 to one in the top half of the eighth inning. So Tanner Morgan to face Peyton Idle. Again, tip your cap to Dearland Bierman, who went off to a very nice ovation from the crowd here at Dugan Field. He did an outstanding job working through seven full innings here today and allowing only one run. And Morgan throws a curveball that's hit foul. Gets ahead, no balls and one strike to Idle. So Morgan from that slot on the left side will bring a lot of off-speed action. Throws that curveball with a big loop to it. And you'll see him work a fastball, particularly on the outside corner to these left-handed hitters. So he's been tough on lefty so far on the season, and he's in there in a matchup here against Peyton Idle with Welch running at second. Another curveball, swings through it, nothing in two. So really pulled the string on that. That curveball's coming in about 60, 62 miles an hour, and Idle was badly fooled by it there. So no balls and two strikes for Idle. Activity still down in the Bison's bullpen couple of guys throwing. One of them is right-hander Matthew Maldonado. I can't see who the other one is, but there are two arms throwing down there. Here comes the 0-2 from Morgan to Idle. That's a curveball. It's going to stay outside. It's a ball and two strikes. He laid off that one. And you'll see the Bison's pitchers using that wristband system. If you're not familiar with it, when there's a runner on second base, the sign comes in from the dugout, and they'll take it off the wristband, and both pitcher and catcher will get it. Here comes the 1-2 from Morgan. Breaking ball, swung on and hit in the foul territory, giving chase to Smith, still giving chase, can't get there as it hits on top of the tarp. So good effort there from Carter Smith, but that one just got to the tarp. And the count will remain a ball and two strikes on Peyton Idle. So four straight curve balls from Tanner Morgan to Idle so far. He's yet to figure out the timing on those. Got a little bit of sunshine here for the first time all day, a little break in the clouds. We've been... Mostly cloudy and to full clouds all day long. We've got a small peak of sunshine coming through. Here comes the one ball, two strike pitch from Tanner Morgan to Peyton Idle. Fastball just off the plate, two and two. Good spot for that fastball, but he didn't bite, so it'll be a 2 2 count for Peyton Idle. Designated hitter Andrew Terrell waits on deck. Swings and just gets a piece of it. That's a curveball again, and he just got it off the end of the bat. So Morgan really giving idle fits with that curveball so far as it's moving away from him. And that's why you do that lefty-lefty matchup. You want that ball moving away from the hitter and disrupting timing. And so far, Morgan has done an excellent job executing that. He's come in and thrown every pitch but one as a curveball. So we'll see how they like to play it here with a 2-2 count. Again, Bailey Welch running at second base. We're in the top of the eighth inning. Lipscomb leading Appalachian State 4-1. And that's a curveball just off the plate, three and two. Four runs, five hits, one error for the Bisons. One run, four hits, no errors for the Mountaineers. Both starters were excellent today. Tanner Morgan on in relief of Dylan Bierman. And here's the payoff. And he hit him. So that was a curveball that stayed inside, and that'll put Idle on at first. Welch will obviously hold that second. And that'll bring up designated hitter Andrew Terrell. And we'll see if they leave Morgan in to pitch to the right-hander Terrell. Looks like he's going to stay in there. So Terrell on the day has struck out twice and reached on an error. So he's 0 for 3 on the day. After going two for five last night. So two for eight on the weekend for Terrell. So runners first and second. Nobody out. Top of the eighth inning. And fastball catches the inside corner. No balls, one strike. 
Bisons are playing in on the corners. Third baseman Smith and first baseman Williams are both a step or so inside the bag, looking to see if the bunt might be on. Bit of a shift on with Merced shifted way over in the six hole on the shortstop side, and second baseman Brian Moore playing almost straight up the middle. Here comes the 0-1. Curveball, foul straight back, and it's no balls and two strikes. So Morgan has gotten ahead of Terrell here with a fastball and a curve. Again, Terrell came in batting 235. No homers and nine RBIs on the year. Welch is your runner at second, and Idle is running at first, and nobody is out here in the top of the eighth with Lipscomb leading 4-1 to one over Appalachian State. Tanner Morgan gets set to bring the 0-2 to Terrell. That bounces up there. Good play, Bertolani, to keep it in front. It'll be a ball and two strikes. So one ball, two strikes. much fastball slider and change. He does have a bit of a cutter as well, so we'll see what he likes to go with here. Here comes the 1-2. Swung on and hit foul out of play to the right side. That was a curveball. So Terrell does a good job keeping the at-bat alive here. Second baseman Drumheller. Drumheller will be the next batter. Barring a uh, really unusual play that would end the inning here, so. Updated softball score, Lip Lipscomb now trailing Liberty 6 to nothing in the top of the 7th. Game 2 of that doubleheader next door at the softball diamond. Here comes the 1-2, just inside, 2-2. Two and two. Like a fastball that he ran inside on him, but he took it. And that'll be a 2-ball, two 2-strike two count on Terrell. Again, in the inning, Welch doubled off of Bierman. And then Tanner Morgan came on in relief hit idle to put him on at first. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and hit down the left field line. That's going to be foul. That was a curveball that he got on. But it remains 2-2. Two and two. Don't see any activity in the Appalachian State bullpen, so... As I mentioned, a couple of arms throwing down in the Bison's bullpen. Both teams having to go deep in their pen last night. Lipscomb using six pitchers total. Here comes the 2-2 two -two from Tanner Morgan. Inside and low, 3-2. and two. So Terrell's done a good job working the at-bat. He started out 0-2, and, and he's fouled off a couple and now come all the way back to a 3-2 count. So runners first and second, nobody out. The Mountaineers are threatening here in the top half of the eighth inning. Here comes the payoff pitch from Morgan to Terrell. Hit him again. That's the second hit by pitch in a row. So that's going to load the bases and bring up Drumheller, the second baseman, and I think that's going to be all for Morgan. Looks like we may have a... Actually, Coach Forehand probably going out to ask if he made an attempt to get out of the way. So that's one of those tough rules here in college baseball. If the judgment of the umpire is that the hitter in any way leaned into the pitch or didn't make a reasonable attempt to get out of the way, then he can call a strike. Very much a judgment call and certainly one that causes a lot of consternation on all sides because it's a judgment of did he make enough of an effort to try to get out of the way and then sometimes it certainly seems odd to reward the pitcher for missing the plate by three or four feet, but that's what the rule is in college baseball. But you do see a lot of controversy around that rule and how it is applied in various situations. But nonetheless, the outcome is that the Mountaineers have the bases loaded and nobody out, and their second baseman, Luke Drumheller, up. Drumheller homered back in the first, flew out in the third, and then was retired on a ground ball to first baseman Malik Williams in the sixth. So he's one for three on the day. That's after being 0 for six yesterday. But dangerous hitter, again, three homers, 24 RBIs on the season, and the bases are loaded. And a curveball hit him as well. And Coach Forehand's really not going to be happy with that. I believe first base umpire Todd Henderson might overrule it. He's saying, nope, go back. So 
the call at the plate was that he was hit by the pitch, but first base umpire Todd Henderson raised his hand immediately and said, nope, you got to go back because you leaned into that pitch. So I believe that'll go down as a strike. And again, that's the rule we were just talking about. And now Mountaineers coach Kermit Smith is going to come out and ask for an explanation from home plate umpire Matthew Bar Barrett. So no question the ball hit the, hit the batter. But the rule from the first base umpire, Todd Henderson, was that he made no attempt to try to get out of the way. So we'll see if they register that as a ball or a strike. Again, waiting for the sign from the home plate umpire as to how he's going to classify it. And he's going to give it a strike. So it's no balls and one strike after that one from Drumheller. Again, bases are loaded. Nobody out, top of the eighth inning. Lipscomb holding a 4-1 to one lead. And that's a curveball that's going to stay way outside. So that'll be a ball and a strike. Welch is running at third. Idle running at second. And Terrell running at first. Welch double to start the inning. And then Idle and Terrell were both hit by the pitch. And Drumheller was actually hit, but ruled that he leaned into it. So it's a ball and a strike. And Tanner Morgan gets set. Curveball hit in the air to center field. Houghton's going back, still going back to his right. Tagging at third is Welch. The throw is going to come towards third, and Welch is going to score on the sacrifice fly off the bat of Drumheller. So Welch scores the second run for the Mountaineers. It's Lipscomb four, Appalachian State two. Idle held up at second, and Terrell held up at first as the throw came in towards third. And with one out, that'll bring up the left fielder, Kendall McGowan. McGowan has flied out to center, grounded out to short, and flied out to center. So he is 0 for 3 on the day. That's on the heels of a 1 for 4 night last night. So 1 for 7 on the weekend for McGowan. And Morgan's going to stay in there to face him as well. And just as I say that, Coach Forehand comes out and actually indicates he's going to make a change. So there's going to be a change. While they make that change, we'll catch you up again on the upcoming schedule. Reminder that these two teams will play again here tomorrow. First pitch at 1 p.m. Central Time between Appalachian State and Lipscomb, game three of this series. Belmont then will be here on Wednesday for a 1 p.m. start, and then the Bisons will be on the road Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Kennesaw State. And the start time Central Times will be 4 p.m. on Friday, 1 p.m. on Saturday, and noon on Sunday. Bisons then travel to Tennessee on s Tuesday the 27th, and then they're back home with a three-game series against North Alabama. So upcoming schedule action for your Bisons, who will be here home on Wednesday for a businessman special, 1 p.m. start, and then on the road next weekend in Atlanta at Kennesaw State. like the new pitcher is going to be freshman right-hander Gavin Grubbs, a 5'10", 170-pounder out of Canton, Georgia, in Creekview High School. Grubbs pitched two-thirds of an inning last night. He gave up one hit and had two strikeouts, so he pitched very effectively for the Bisons in the extra inning loss last night to Appalachian State, and we'll give you his updated stats on the season. As a result of that, that was two appearances on the season for Grubbs. He's worked one in the third innings. He's given up one hit, no runs, no walks, and two strikeouts. Opponents batting just 167 against him. So Bison's turn it over to Gavin Grubbs here. Let's reset where we are in the inning. Well, started with a double. Bison's then brought in Tanner Morgan, who hit Peyton Idle, and then he hit Andrew Terrell, and then he gave up a sacrifice fly to Luke Drumheller. That played it a run, and so we're currently two on and one out, and a pitching change to Gavin Grubbs, the third Bisons pitcher on the day. Dylan Bierman started for the Bisons and was outstanding. He went seven full innings, gave up four hits, two runs, two earned, walked two, struck out three, needed only 83 pitches. 58 of those 83 were strikes today, so he's really pounding the zone. Tanner Morgan went a third of an inning, and now Grubbs is on as the third Bisons pitcher of the day. He'll be facing left fielder Kendall McGowan, who, as we mentioned, is 0 for 3 on the day. Does have four home runs and 16 RBIs. He's the leading home run hitter for the Mountaineers. So Lipscomb leading 4 to 2, top of the eighth inning. Good ball game between these two teams. Again, last night they went into 11 innings, and Appalachian State prevailed with a 9 to 5 win. So the two teams have played good ball games all around this weekend. And the sunshine is really coming out now. The 
Pitching mound's a little bit in the shadows, and home plate is in the shadows, but the sun is on the rest of the field, so it's nice to get some sunshine out today. We were very cloudy earlier in the game, all the way up until this inning, in fact. So Grubbs gets set to face off against McGowan. That's going to be off the plate for ball one. So Grubbs, the sidewinder, throws hard out of that slot. He's got a two-seamer that will throw out of that as well as a slider, and a lot of movement on that ball. So tough for the right-handers to see that ball coming across them. It's a one-ball, no-strike count on Kendall McGowan. And he swings through that one, a ball and a strike. So one ball, one strike, one out, runners first and second for Appalachian State, top of the eighth inning. The 1-1, one, one, swung through it again, ball and two strikes. So Grubbs appears to have McGowan fooled a bit at the moment. With that two-seamer and his slider in his arsenal, so we'll have a 1-2 count here. Idle on at second, and Terrell, your runner at first. Swung on and hit straight back. That's going to get out of play and into the stands here. Back our way. So the count will hold at a ball and two strikes. North Florida and Stetson are now underway in that game. Bottom of the first, that's going to be the only game between those two today. We mentioned earlier Liberty has beaten North Alabama and Kennesaw State has beaten Bellarmine. The only other action of A-Sun teams, Florida Gulf Coast has beaten Wright State today. Here comes the 1-2 from Grubbs to McGowan. Call strike three, beautiful slider there. Backdoor slider that started almost behind him and then wound up on the inside part of the plate. So big strike out there for Grubbs. And that's a big second out of the inning, and that'll bring up Robbie Young, the first baseman. Young has grounded out, flied out, and been retired on a ground out as well. So he's 0 for 3 on the day. Still 4 for 8 on the weekend, so he's had a good weekend so far. And catcher Chaz Bertolani is going to go out and chat with Grubbs about the sign system most likely here. As we mentioned, there's a wristband system that they often use when a runner's on second base. But Grubbs comes in and does exactly what you want him to do. Gets a big strike out of McGowan, and now he's got a chance to get the Bisons out of this without further damage. It's only been one hit in the inning, but a couple of hit batsmen and made it tough on the Bisons pitching staff. So Coach Forehand's coming out to the mound. Looks like that may be the only batter for Grubbs, but he comes in and does a job getting a big strike out. And we'll step aside for a moment as we make a pitching change. Again, your score, Lipscomb 4. And Appalachian State 2. You're watching Lipscomb Bison's Baseball on YouTube Live. New Bison's pitcher is the hard-throwing right-hander sophomore Matthew Maldonado, six-foot-tall, 204 pounds, out of Sagan, Texas, in Navarro High School. 
Maldonado is on for his 11th appearance of the season. He's worked 18 and two-thirds innings, given up 26 hits, 15 runs, 14 of which are earned, 12 walks at 27 strikeouts in those 18 and two-thirds innings. He does have a record of 0-2 and, and a 6.75 ERA. He did pitch on Tuesday in that game against Pittsburgh, pitched very effectively and had, a, I believe, a total of nine strikeouts over the course of about four innings. So he worked really, really effectively in that game. Maldonado did not see action in last night's game. So he's brought on now as the third pitcher of the inning. Bierman, actually fourth pitcher. Bierman worked to one batter, then Tanner Morgan, followed by Gavin Grubbs, and now Maldonado is on. And the situation is two men on, two out. And first baseman Robbie Young batting. Robbie, as we mentioned, 0 for 3 on the day. So Maldonado, a hard-throwing right-hander. He's got a four-seamer. You'll also see him throw a curve and a change-up. But a power arm coming right at you, typically with a mid-90s fastball. Swung on and hit in the air to center field, and Houghton's got a bead on it. And with one pitch, there's one out. So Maldonado shuts down the rally. But the Mountaineers do score a run, courtesy of one base hit. They strand two. They've left six on the day. We head to the home half of the eighth inning, and your score, Lipscomb 4, Appalachian State 2. You're watching Lipscomb Bison's Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the home half of the eighth inning. Lipscomb, four runs, five hits, one error. Appalachian State, two runs, four hits, no errors. Due up for the Bisons will be five, six, and seven. Bertolani Smith and Ty Jones to face the right-hander Jason Kornatzer, who's on in relief of starter Quentin Martinez, who did an excellent job. Both starting pitchers, really outstanding outings today. Dylan Bierman for the Bisons and Quentin Martinez for the Mountaineers. Been a well-played game. The Bisons are clinging to that 4-2 to lead, and Bertolani will lead things off. Chaz has had an outstanding day. He's been on base all three times. He's had a double and two walks, so one for one officially on the day, but been on base all three times, and he'll lead things off against Kornatzer here in the home half of the eighth inning. And he swings and hits the first pitch towards second base, and Drumheller's going to be up with it, and with one pitch. There is one out. So Bertolani retired for the first time today. And that'll bring up Carter Smith. Carter also still looking for his first base hit on the day. Grounded into a double play in the second. Popped out in the fourth and struck out swinging in the fifth. So 0 for 3 for Carter on the day. Now 1 for 8 on the weekend. He bats with one out and the base is empty. Bottom of the eighth, Lipscomb 4, Appalachian State 2. We'll catch you up on some top 25 scores as we have a chance this inning. There's a lot of baseball being played around the country today. Fastball over the outside corner, strike one. So top 25 games, Florida State has beaten Boston College 5-1. to one. LSU, or correction, South Carolina beat LSU 4-2 to two in a game one of a doubleheader. 21st ranked Charlotte beat UTSA 10-6. to six. That's an off-speed pitch that's in there, strike two. Pittsburgh has beat North Carolina 6-2. to two. It was a Bison's opponent from earlier this week. They're ranked 19th currently. Southern Miss has beaten 14th-ranked Louisiana Tech 4-3. to three, And 18th-ranked Florida has beaten Missouri 8-6. to six. Here comes the 0-2. Fastball high. One ball and two strikes. 23rd-ranked Indiana State beating Valpo 11-2. NC State has upset 10th-seeded 
Notre Dame 5-2. to two. And 25th ranked Michigan has beaten Minnesota 4-0. to zero. Just off the plate with that off-speed pitch, so it's 2-2. Two and two. Top ranked Arkansas has beaten Texas A&M 13 to 0. 22nd ranked Old Dominion 11 to 2 over Rice, and 17th ranked Virginia Tech 7 to nothing over Georgia Tech. Here comes a 2-2 from Cornanser to Carter Smith. Slider stays downstairs. Up. Yep. Are they going to say he swung at that? I didn't see a swing, I have to admit, and the ball was down in the dirt, so I guess that's going to be a swinging strikeout. Coach Forehand is walking down the third baseline, and he seems a bit incredulous as well. I, I got to say, I did not see a swing there. I don't think the pitch was a strike as it was down in the dirt. Again, we don't have the benefit of a replay here, but I did not see a swing, and I thought that pitch was definitely down and out of the strike zone. But regardless, it's going to be the second out of the inning. be the first strikeout for Cornatzer, and that'll bring up Ty Jones. He'll bat with two outs and the base is empty. Ty's 0 for 3 on the day. He's grounded out to third base three straight times, so we'd like to see him try to find another spot to get the ball through. He's hit the ball hard, but right at somebody in each of those times at the plate. A couple other top 25 scorers, TCU and Oklahoma State. TCU has defeated Oklahoma State 8-7. to seven. TCU ranked 12th and Oklahoma State ranked 13th. That's a ball, one ball, no strikes. Third-ranked Texas has beaten Abilene Christian 3-1. to one. And we mentioned earlier, Tennessee now it has gone final. Tennessee has beaten Vanderbilt 8-4. to four. Swung on a tap foul, and that will even the count at a ball and a strike. Other scores in game two. Louisiana Tech came back to beat Southern Miss 5-3. to three. Pittsburgh is leading North Carolina 3-2 in game two. So that would be a two-game sweep by the Pitt Panthers if they're able to hold on and win. Arizona is leading Washington State 8-3 to three in the bottom of the sixth. And Oregon's leading Southern California 13-3 to three in the bottom of the sixth. Florida leads Missouri 2-1 in the seventh. Swung on and hit in the air toward the right side. First baseman Young is going to come over and call for it. And he's going to glove it for the third out of the inning. So a quiet inning for the Bisons. But they lead 4-2 to two, headed to the ninth. And we'll see if Matthew Maldonado can close this one out. Your score after eight full innings. Lipscomb 4, Appalachian State 2. You're watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live. We head to the top of the ninth inning. Your score is Lipscomb 4, Appalachian State 2, and right-hander Matthew Maldonado out to try to close this one out for the Bisons. Maldonado does not have a save on the season. This would be a save opportunity. He's going to face 6, 7, and 8, the scheduled hitters for the Mountaineers. That would be Cole. And pinch hitter was Williams, so we're not sure who will be at bat in that spot. And then LeShock. So we'll see how Coach Smith elects to play it, but Cole will be the first man batting, and he's 0 for 3 on the day. He's grounded out twice and struck out. That's after having three hits and six trips last night. So Maldonado starts him off with a fastball that he swings through, nothing in one. So outfield, normal depth and straight away, guarding the lines of first and third, as you'd expect here late in the innings with a slight lead that they're clinging to. Maldonado's pitch is on the outside part, and Cole hits it foul, and he quickly he's got him in a no-ball two-strike hole. Again, Maldonado with hard-throwing right-hander. He'll come right at you with a fastball that will get into the mid-90s. Also got a slider and a change that can give hitters trouble with that timing when you throw that hard. Here comes the 0-2 from Maldonado, and 
And there's an off-speed pitch that stays outside. It's a ball and two strikes. Maldonado, the fourth pitcher of the day for the Bisons. We'll give you that recap in just a moment. Here comes the one-two. Swung on and hit foul late on the fastball. Ball and two strikes. So Dylan Bierman started seven outstanding innings. And then in the eighth inning, one out from Morgan, one out from Grubbs, one out from Maldonado. Three separate pitchers used after Bierman, after Bierman had given up the leadoff base hit. So Maldonado, the fourth pitcher of the day for the Bisons, who need three outs to walk off with a win in this one. Here comes the one-two. Just missed inside with a fastball, two and two. Again, the teams played an 11-inning affair last night, and Appalachian State came away with a 9-5 to five win. And Playing a good ball game here today, so it's been a good series. Again, game three tomorrow, 1 o'clock first pitch. We'll be on the air at 1255 on YouTube Live. Invite you to join us for the broadcast if you can't be here in person. Here comes the 2-2. Swung on and tap foul again. That looked like a slider on the outside part. So we'll do it again with a two-ball, two-strike count. Nobody out. Again, top of the ninth. Lipscomb four, Appalachian State two. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and hit in the air toward the right side. Ty Jones, the right fielder, is going to be camped under that one. And he's got it for out number one. So big first out of the inning for Matthew Maldonado. And I believe we're going to have a pinch hitter here. And we are indeed. That's number 35, and that's Hayden Cross. Cross, a 5'11", 190-pound junior out of Sanford, North Carolina, in Southern Lee High School. He played last night as the catcher, was one for four with an RBI. So Cross batting here. First at bat on the day, and he takes a pitch off the plate for ball one. Batting 268 on the season is Cross. Comes the 1-0. Gets a call there. Strike one. 268. He's got no home runs, five RBIs on the season. He's played in 26 games and started 23 of them. 71 at-bats, 19 hits. Two doubles and one triple to go along with those RBIs. And it's a ball and a strike. Swung on and hit up in the air. That's going to stay in play for Bertolani, and he gloves it for the second out. So the Mountaineers are down to their final out of the day, and that'll be in the person of Alex Leshock, the center fielder. Leshock has one base hit in three trips. He's flied out the other two times. He's now two for seven on the weekend, has scored a run, got an RBI. So Leshock is batting two outs, bases empty. And Matthew Maldonado trying to close the door here for the Bisons as they lead 4-2. That hit him. Not sure if it got him in the shoulder or in the face, but he is hit by pitch, and so he'll be aboard with two outs. If he's all right, that's a 90-plus mile an hour fastball coming in there, but he appears to be okay, and he's going to trot down to first. Looks like we might have a... Nope, correction, no pinch hitter here. It's going to be Welch, the scheduled hitter. So Bailey Welch will stand in. Welch has flied out, reached on a walk, and doubled. So he's one for two on the day. 0 for 5 last night, so 1 for 7 on the weekend. So he bats with two outs, runner on at first. Top of the ninth inning. Swung on and foul straight back. Maldonado going, Maldonado going right at him with a fastball there. And Welch fouling it back out of play. Welch had a good battle last night with Bison's fine closer, Tyler Guilfoyle. He was up there and he kept fouling pitches off and fouling pitches off and fouling pitches off. So He's a guy who's going to get his hacks at the play. Comes in batting 276 on the year. Has one home run and 14 RBIs. Batting 276, but a 409 on base average for Welch. Comes the 01. Slider bounces up there. It's a ball and a strike and throw to first. And Leishock is able to get back. Quick snap throw there from Bertolani, seeing if he could catch Leshock sleeping over at first on that secondary lead, but he was back. And the count will be a ball and a strike. Two outs, top of the ninth, Lipscomb four, Appalachian State two. Swings and 
taps it foul, and now he's down to his final strike. So it'll be a ball and two strikes. That was a fastball on the outside part of the plate. Looks like he wasn't sure if he wanted to swing at it or not, and he just fouled it down the line. So one ball, two strikes for Bailey Welch, and Matthew Maldonado looks to close this one out for the Bisons. Again, Lay Shock, your runner at first base. Here comes the one, two. That's a breaking ball that bounces up there. Again, Bertolani, nice play to keep it in front. And it'll make the count two and two. So two balls, two strikes, one out, or correction, two outs. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, runner at first. And Matthew Maldonado is going to be pitching to Bailey Welch. Swung on and hit foul again. So Welch doing what he did with Guilfoy last night, having a good at-bat. Regardless how this one ends, you got to tip your hat to him. as he has extended this at bat against the hard-throwing Bison's right-hander, Matthew Maldonado. So we'll do the 2-2 pitch all again here from Maldonado to Welch. Swung and fouled again. So good battle going on here between these two. And again, you got to Tip your cap to Welch and say he's hung in there and really done some solid things having this at bat and making a uh, an extension of it. You mentioned that he is high on base percentage. He's walked 16 times on the season at 87 at bat. So good plate discipline and a guy who's going to get his hacks up there. So it's two balls, two strikes, two outs. The shock, your runner at first. And Matthew Maldonado set to come to Bailey Welch. Swung on and hit foul again. So we'll do it again at a two ball, two strike count. I've lost track of the foul balls. That's got to be at least four or five, I believe, that Welsh has put up there. Again, doing a good job extending that at bat and staying on that. Fastball as well as the tough breaking ball off of Maldonado. Here comes the 2-2. Swung on, papped in the air toward the right side. Should stay in play for Malik Williams at first. He's going to get called off by Brian Moore. He's going to glove it for out three. And you can wrap this one in purple and gold. Matthew Maldonado comes in and gets the save by retiring Welch. It was the tying run at the plate, and Lipscomb is going to win this one 4-2 to two over Appalachian State. Good ball game between these two today. Let's recap how the scoring went. Both teams put up a run in the first inning. Appalachian State got right to work as Peyton Idle singled. He was picked off, but Luke Drumheller hit a solo home run to deep center field to give the Mountaineers a 1-0 league. The Bisons came back in the bottom of the first with a walk to Tiger Borum, a double to Robbie Merced, and a sack fly uh, that drove him in um, after Chris Bachelor had struck out. It was a gr RBI ground out uh, from Malik Williams, who was able to drive the run home. Uh, neither team scored again until the fifth inning when the Bisons led off with a double from Maddox Houghton. He was sacrificed over by Brian Moore. Tiger Borum walked, and then Robbie Merced hit a ball to first that was brought home. They couldn't get the out recorded at the plate as Houghton slid across. Chris Bashel retired on a fly ball, but then Malik Williams doubled and drove in a couple more, and the Bisons had three runs on the board for their fourth run of the day. That led, gave them a 4-1 to one lead. Appalachian State continued to battle, and they put up a run in the eighth inning. Bailey Welch led off with a double, and then two straight hit by pitches after the Bisons made a pitching change and a sack fly off the bat from Drumheller. But... Gavin Grubbs came in and got a strikeout of McGowan, and then Maldonado came out and induced a fly out on the first pitch he threw, and that kept the lead at 4-2. to two. The Bisons had nothing doing in the bottom of the eighth. And in the top of the ninth, Maldonado hit one batter but got three fly ball outs, including a foul out to the catcher, to slam the door. 
and to get the win for the Bisons, 4-2. to two. Again, outstanding start today from Dylan Bierman. Bierman went seven innings, gave up four hits, two runs, two earned, two walks, three strikeouts. He only needed 83 pitches to get through those seven innings. Seeing relief action today was Morgan, Grubbs, and then Maldonado, who will pick up the save going one and a third innings. No Bisons player with multiple hits today, but three RBIs off the bat of Malik Williams. He was one for four with those three RBIs on the day. Bisons only had five base hits with Merced, Bertolani, Houghton, and Moore picking up the other base hits on the day. So the winning pitcher is going to go to Dylan Bierman. He will take his record to two and three on the season. The loss, I believe, will go to Quentin Martinez, who will drop to three and five on the season. The time of the game was two hours and 51 minutes. And again, game three on tap between these two teams tomorrow. 1 p.m. first pitch central time. We'll be on the air at 12.55 with our YouTube broadcast. So again, your final line score for Lipscomb, four runs, five hits, one error. For Appalachian State, two runs, four hits, and no errors. Our special thanks go to Lipscomb Athletic Director Philip Hutchison, Associate Athletic Director Brent McMillan, the Director of Sports Communications Kirk Downs, and Baseball Communications Directors uh, Jack Bloom and Hannah Jo Riley. I want to thank our crew today, especially Spencer Bohm, who acted as our director, as well as our camera person, and my co-host Justin Einstein, who came in to fill in a couple of innings. That'll do it for today's action. Lipscomb defeats Appalachian State 4-2. to two. This is Doc Allen saying thanks for your time this time. Until next time, so long. You've been watching Lipscomb Bisons Baseball on YouTube Live.